Todd Harris, take it away. Kick up ahead. Get that gun from him. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Cars.com. Here at the Carrier Dome, it's the Boston College Eagles and the Syracuse Orange. Alongside 1981 Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown, I'm Todd Harris. Welcome to Syracuse. Here's the series as the Orange leads the all-time series, 28-17. Their last meeting coming in 04, and it was a memorable one. Syracuse cost BC the Big East title in the final conference matchup. And the Q's 10-2 this year, 10-2 in that matchup. But this year, the home field has not been kind to them. What's at stake, Tim? No doubt about it. Bowl positioning. Both of these teams are playing for a better bowl today. And Syracuse is looking at the pinstripe bowl right now, but they're trying to improve. Conference pride, always playing for pride. Recruiting there, Jay. That is a, all I've heard since I've been on campus is recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. And obviously, a Boston College win today and a win in a bowl game gets them eight wins in 10, 10 years, 10 straight years. Not a big fan of indoor football, on a, but on a day like today, it's we Syracuse. We will appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is chilly outside the Carrier Dome. Rob Long gets us started here. It's a short kick, and it's Billy Swigert from the 10. Swigert finds a seam. He'll take it out to about the 27-yard line for an 18, call it a 17-yard return. So Chase Reddick, the true freshman quarterback from San Clemente, California, gets the start for Boston College. And Tim, what strikes you about this Boston College team for head coach Frank Spaziano, it is very young. It's very, very young. They played as many as 29 sophomores and freshmen in a couple games this year. And uh, these young guys are going to have to play big for them today. Chase Reddick in First and 10 from the 27, they'll start off on the ground game, and that is of note as Andre Williams gets the call, a six-yard pickup, and Mike Palmas makes the stop as we take a look at our impact players today. First up for Boston College, Andre Williams, who just got the ball, filling yes. in for Montel Harris. Big shoes he has to fill today, but this young man has to play well to keep the pressure off of young Chase Reddick. Costanzo, we know he is a beast. He is an anchor of this offensive line. He has to play well and protect the backside of Chase Reddick. On second down, they're going to eye formation. McCluskey as a lead blocker. Reddick rolls out, has his receiver out in the front and the flat, and it's Chris Pantale with a 17-yard pickup. Shamarco Thomas, number 21, comes up and makes the stop as we take a look at the impact players for the defensive side. Well, Doug Hogue, Doug Hogue is a guy who started at, at tailback and now playing linebacker for this team and is playing very well. He is the emotional leader of the defense, along with Darrell Smith. These two guys have similar backgrounds, both playing offense first and now leading the defense and tackling and, and leadership. On first down for Boston College at the 48. Redding on the draw. Andre Williams with the carry, four-yard pickup. Both teams saying how important it is to establish the run early on. Well, no doubt about it. Uh, for, for Boston College, they're going to have to do a lot of plays, a lot of draws, a lot of play action, try to take the pressure off a of young Chase Reddick if they can without the horse Harris being in the lineup today. Frank Spaziani, the head coach of Boston College in his second season, a longtime defensive coordinator. He is the fountain of youth. Coach Spaz is affectionately known at the Heights. Second down and six, ball just inside the 45. Reddick comes out firing again, finds his tight end, Lars Anderson, Shamarco Thomas on the coverage, but it's a five-yard pickup. So good mix of plays early on yeah, for the Eagles. And they're going to play close to the vest, you know, trying to get Chase settled down, get him ready to do what he has to do today. Short passes, play action passes, draws, good for the quarterback's nerves, that's for sure. Getting the young freshman Chase Reddick out of San Clemente, California, running the show for Frank Spaziano. That'll bring up a big third down. Third and short for the Eagles with the ball resting just inside the 39. Keep it on the ground. Andre Williams, another freshman. Anthony Perkins makes the stop, but it's not before the four-yard pickup. Well, we saw here what we've been seeing with Syracuse watching them on film all year, and that is a lot of mis 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 uh, missed tackles. Right. You cannot miss tackles in this league if you're going to have uh, 
uh, if you're going to have any kind of success. And you see right here, have a chance to, to knock him down. Uh, Lewis right there, and Lewis misses a tackle. And here we are, first and 10 for Boston College. So a fresh set of downs from the 35 as Boston College continues their drive. And that that wasn't a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> a sure tackle coming from the secondary, Darrell Smith, and it's a two-yard loss. And you got to think about Darrell Smith, a fifth-year senior. He's a former running back. Well, he knows he knows the holes. He knows how to make this thing happen. He is coming right through the hole. Bam! Make that tackle. Very nice job. One of the many grad students on the team for Syracuse, and that will bring up a second down with a loss of yardage. So call it second and twelve. McCluskey goes in motion as Reddick operates out of the shotgun. Alex Amadon, the receiver, six-yard pickup. Another freshman called into action for Boston College. Amadon's an interesting story. The freshman from Greenfield, Mass., born in London, England. Goes 5'11", 186, and that's generous 5'11". <laughs> <Right. laughs> Looking more like 4'5", 9 out there to me right about now. <laughs> Third and six as head coach Frank Spaziani looks on a beautiful drive so far for the Eagles at the early going here at the Carrier Dome. Pressure coming, ball's tipped, and it's received nicely by Amadon again, the freshman. So freshman to freshman, and another first down, Doug Hogue on the coverage. What a great catch by Amadon right there. Climbing the ladder, as we like to say, to make a very nice third down conversion catch. Just got a fingertip on it. Oh, boy. That's good concentration. First and 10 from the 24. BC back to the running game. And this is the freshman, Andre Williams, out of Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Shamarco Thomas makes the stop, but an eight-yard gain. When we talked to the coach this week, not having Montel Harris, who underwent knee surgery on Monday, and he's back home at Jacksonville. Wish him the best of luck. But Andre Williams comes in. I said, Coach, what do you have to do for this young man? He says, we have faith in Andre. That's all I said. And if you're a player, Tim, you got to oh, feel pretty all, good about that's that. That's all you can ask for. You know, watching him on film last week, he came in and played very well. But you never know how a week of preparation and a week of thinking, hey, i got to be the number one guy, how that's going to play on the guy. But right now, he's playing good football. Tenth play of the drive. On second and two, they go back to Andre Williams off the left-hand side and stop defensive stand by the orange as Anthony Perkins makes the stop for no gain. Our stop right here for Syracuse would be huge. Get this team off the field. Hold them to a field goal try right here. That would be very huge for a Syracuse defense right now. They haven't played the best of defense this year, so any anytime they can get a stop, it's going to be huge for them. Third and one, the 11th play of the opening drive for Boston College with the freshman Chase Reddick at the helm. I formation. And this freshman is making it look easy. You know, when we talk to the coaches, we ask them, hey, in 30, 30 short, 40 shorts, where are you going to run the ball? Yeah. Oh, well, we're just going to run it anywhere. We feel good we, about all of them. Yeah, we see where they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball behind Anthony Casanzo. <laughs> big beast of a of left tackle right there. Great job by him. Hoping up a big hole for He for is the anchor of that line, number 74. 3.5 GPA in biochemistry. Yeah. Not quite basket weaving. <laughs> so a first down for Boston College with the ball just outside the 10. Williams trying to be patient there, but he's finally picked off by Anthony Perkins, the senior from Washington, D.C., for no game. So you're in their red zone. You've got a freshman wide receiver, a freshman tailback, and a freshman quarterback. Coach Brown, what are you calling right here? I'm going to keep running the ball behind Kitsap. So if he can open up some holes and we can get closer, we'll go for it on fourth down. But if not, take the three points. You don't want to come out of here without any points. Coaches told us they wanted to establish the run first and foremost and control that physical play up front, and they've done so so far. On second and nine, Reddit goes to the sky. That ball is nearly picked off. 
George Mays, number 36, the senior from LaSalle, New Jersey, on the coverage. He was looking for Clyde Lee. Well, that's, that's the mistake that we're talking about, that Chase doesn't want to make at this particular point of the game. Be safe with the ball. Know that your guy has a chance for the ball and no one else. I mean, you have Momar on here. Momar is 6'6". Six, six. Let's put him out wide and throw the ball up to him one-on-one. -on -one. But let's not throw it in the congested area like that. And check that. Mike Holmes on the coverage, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. So it's third down and nine, and the Carrier Dome comes alive. So Boston College is going to talk this over. Frank Spaziani wants to come away with some points. He'll pull the freshman aside and have a word. We'll be back to Syracuse after this. Back inside the Carrier Dome alongside 1987 Heisman winner Tim Brown. And missed of the opening drive as the freshman Chase Reddick has led Boston College down the field. 13 plays, 62 yards, and they have eaten up seven minutes of clock. Doug Brown, the head man for Syracuse. So after the timeout, it's a third and nine. Frank Spaziani wanted to talk it over. Tim, what do you, what do you think they're going to go with him? Well, you know, I was hoping that they would bring that MoMA and just let him go one-on-one. -on -one. You got 6'6 six, six guy. Just throw the ball up and let this guy make a play. Long setback is McCluskey, the fullback. Third and nine. MoMA in the corner, and they'll say incomplete. Great coverage by Kevin Scott, number 26. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. When you have a guy that size down in the, in the red zone, throw it up and let him make a play. Well, that was really close. I'm not so sure he didn't get that left foot down. Let's take a look. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, it didn't catch the ball either, so. Nate Freeze on for the field goal attempt, but a nice drive nonetheless for Boston College. And Freeze puts it through. So the first points go on the board by way of a 25-yard field goal. Boston College on top, 3-0. Syracuse gets the ball when we return senior day at the Carrier Dome after this. From an and the day after Black Friday, and the malls are still bustling here in Syracuse, New York. 3-0 Boston College on top inside the Carrier Dome on a beautiful day. And we wish all of you happy holidays. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving as we look forward to the end of the college football season and not to mention the bowl season. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, the bowl season is going to be great. Looking forward to that. Notre Dame may even be in a bowl this year, so hey, it's, <laughs> I have something to watch. And that makes the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner very happy. Alongside Tim Brown, I'm Todd Harris. Boston College took the opening drive some 13 plays, chewed up over seven minutes of time on the clock with a very effective offense using a good mix of play, of run, and pass. Well, no doubt about it. They did exactly what they need to do. You know, get, get the ball into to Williams' hands, get him comfortable, and have Chase to make some good, easy throws. Flags out on the play as the ball is brought out to about the 27-yard line, and that's where Syracuse will take over and get their first offensive possession. Glad to have you with us here in Syracuse on a very cold day, but very comfortable <laughs> inside the Carrier Dome as they celebrate 30 years here at Ernie Davis Legends Field. And, Tim, the keys for Syracuse will be after this call. We'll get to that in a moment. During the return, block in the back, number two of the receiving team. Ten yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. So Boston College on top, 3 nothing. as we take a look at the infraction on the return. Yeah, don't make that hit right there. You can see the back of the guys. You can see the guy's number. Let him alone. You know, now they say if you can see his hair, because most of these guys got a hair right. on the helmets, though. <laughs> don't make the hit. So a first and 10, ball resting just inside the 20. Carter with the call off the left-hand side and then a nice run out to about the 29-yard line. Keys to the game for Syracuse. We've already seen Boston College trot out a lot of youth on the field. What does Syracuse need to do? Well, they have to get Delon Carter, Carter going. Van Chu, Van Chu has been a little beat up this year. Right. He's not used to carrying, uh, carrying the load like he has been for the receiver corps. So they're going to try and run the ball and sparingly play this guy and, and put him in a position to make plays for him. On second down, Ryan Nassib goes back to the running game. 
And it is DeLon Carter, the senior out of Cockley, Ohio. And that is a first down for the Orange. Both teams saying emphatically, the key tonight is the run. It's stopping the run and establishing the run. Well, and, and that usually says a little, little bit about your quarterback and how you feel about him, how comfortable you are in putting him in big situations. So, but when you have a guy like Dalen Carter who is able to carry the load, you're going to do that for sure. Five-yard gain for Carter there as Syracuse goes back into I formation. First down, first passing play, man is open, Marcus Sales makes the reception and they're in the Boston College territory, taken down just about the 40-yard line for a 23-yard pickup. Well, that was a great corner route by Marcus Sales. I had the opportunity to talk to Rob Moore this week, uh, the, the wide receiver coach for Syracuse, and he tells me that this guy runs the best routes uh, for the Syracuse team. And here you see him run a very nice corner route, great pass by Nassau, made a very easy, easy catch for him. First down, back to the running game. Antoine Bailey, the junior from Washington, gets the call. He'll pick up six yards. Caleb Ramsey makes the stop as we take a look at our impact players for the Syracuse Orange. Well, certainly you have to have this guy going good for you, Delon Carter. He is, Tyrone Wheatley tells me he's built like a Greek god and he has the ability to make plays, play after play, so they're going to lean on him. Van Chu has played very well for them this year. They're going to try and sparingly play him a date so he'll be able to make plays when they need him to. Second down and four. And hit in the backfield, Antoine Bailey taken down by Caleb Ramsey for a four-yard loss. And the sophomore from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, coaches say he's just so good at holding his point. Lost back to the 38-yard line, third down. Yeah, Ramsey, wow, that was a whip block right there. You don't do that. You need to turn around and let the back know. Uh, watch out. Look out. The man is coming. Third down and eight. Nassau overshoots his man. He was looking for Marcus Sales, the junior from Syracuse, unable to make the reception. Well, how quickly a drive can turn. You yeah. know? I mean, they look great. Four or five plays in a row. One loss yardage play, and all of a sudden they're in a situation where they're looking at punt now. Well, it's a fourth and eight. The ball's resting at about the 38-yard line. So they will call upon Rob Long, the senior from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, to boot it away, and Billy Swigert, the freshman, standing back at his own 10. He takes this one off the right side of his foot, goes out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. And they get a very favorable spot for Syracuse all the way out to the 16-yard line. So not much in the way of the punt, no return, and Boston College gets their second crack at it here at the Carrier Dome when we return to Syracuse. Come see what's cooking at Applebee's. New flavor-loaded steaks. We start with America's best-selling flame-grilled steak. Then we load it up with fresh ingredients and savory flavors, like the Steakhouse Classic with Applebee's signature sauce. Best of all, they start at just $9.99. There's also a Bourbon Street steak with blackened shrimp, the Napa Valley Cabernet and Portobello's, and more. Applebee's new flavor-loaded steak starting at $9.99. There's no place like the neighborhood. This holiday season, buy $50 in Applebee's gift cards and get a $10 bonus card free. Get ready for bowl season with the ESPN Bowl Bound app. Highlights, news and analysis. Weeds.com inside the Toasty Carrier Dome on a beautiful November day here in upstate New York. Todd Harris along with Tim Brown, 3 0 Boston College on top of Syracuse. They get set for their second possession. We talked about their first drive, which was some 13 plays, chewing up seven minutes, a nice mix of run and pass. And remember, freshman quarterback, freshman tailback, freshman wide receiver. Reddick under center on first down. Williams gets the carry. Philip Thomas comes up in three seat position, makes a stop, but again, another eight yard pickup, Tim. Well, you know, at some point here, Syracuse has to do something defensively to put Boston College on, on, the, on the defense. You know, what they're doing is they're allowing them to come and attack him. Come on, let's bring four or five guys. Let's bring somebody here and make them play defense on the offensive side of the ball. 
Second down and six with a ball just outside the 20. Reddick under center. And they keep it on the ground with Andre Williams. Darrell Smith comes up and makes the stop. Not before he picks up a couple more yards. Well, you know, I can tell that there is uh, when you look at these two teams, they don't like each other too much. When you see receivers pushing people out to the plate, then you know there's something going on. Because receivers, we don't do that, Todd. <laughs> That's not what we do. You don't say we put hands on you this <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't do that. So when you see receivers doing that, you know there's something going on. Scott Schaefer, the defensive coordinator, told us we just want our guys to trust their eyes. Big third down, third and three. Reddick rolling out, has his man, and it'll be a first down. Alex Amadon, again, freshman to freshman, and that's good for a six-yard pickup and a fresh set of downs. That's just a very difficult route for a defense to stop. If, you're not, if you don't have a roll-up corner out there, anytime you have that flat defender coming from inside out, that's almost impossible for him to stop. First and 10, Boston College from its 30-yard line. Well, so far, you've got your freshmen managing a very nice game and a tough place to play. Hey, but they're not putting any pressure on right? it. Nice, nice little easy passes and making it uh, pretty, pretty simple for it. They go back to Andre Williams off the right-hand side, and this time, yeah. the Orange load up the box. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Bring the guys up closer to the ball. Let them know we think you're going to run the ball, but we're going to be here for you. Make this kid throw the ball. Darrell Smith on the stop grad student in the Newhouse School of Advertising, Communications Pursuing Advertising. Look at all the people in the hole right there. Somebody was expecting a run right there. So a two-yard loss on that play will bring up a second and 11 with the ball resting just inside the 30, make it the 28 and a half yard line. the fullback gets the call this time off the right hand side they try a little power running game and he will pick up about two yards nice stop made by Mikhail Marinovich the junior out of San Clemente California well tonight on ABC two classic rivalries the Oklahoma Sooners take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys with a spot in the Big 12 championship game at state some of you will see Tim Brown's Notre Dame Fighting Irish taking on the Trojans the LA Coliseum right. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines that's 8 Eastern tonight on ABC. Third down and seven. Ball resting at the 33-yard line. Uh, Freshman this, quarterback out of the gun. This is a good down to pressure the quarterback right here. Third and seven. Make him throw the ball quick. Make the hit. And whistles come before the play can get started. They'll blow this one dead. Fellas all getting together, having a chat about holiday plans. Well, it's, a, it's the Marinovich kid over there, you know. Delay of the game, number seven of the offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Our referee, Tom Zamorski, making the call. What do you think about this, uh, this late shove, this late tap? So the whistle's blown dead. <laughs> Brandon Sharp got every ounce of that, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did. Is, is that the carrier dome just too loud? I didn't hear the whistle. Yeah, well, you know, I, I heard the whistle, but maybe they didn't hear the whistle down there. <laughs> so make it a third and 12 now. They'll bring Andre Williams back as the long setback. Quick pass to the freshman down the outside. Got the tackle. Philip Thomas on the carry, 13 yards. Billy Swigert, another freshman. And a first down, Eagles. You know, in that situation, they had the right call on. They blitzed him, made him get the ball out quick. Now you just have to make the tackle. And we talked about this a little bit. They have not been tackling well, and that is going to extend the, the drive for Boston College. And this, boy, for Syracuse, you got to get off the field. Some kind of way, you got to find a way to get off the field. Well, you look at this with just a minute 29 to play in the first quarter, and the Orange have had the ball one time. High formation. With the fake, Reddit will put it up in the air. He's got a man down there and just overshoots his intended receiver, Clyde Lee, the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. A lot of youth playing today in the Carrier Dome for Boston College. And uh, these are the true freshmen they're playing right now. 
Well, these guys so far have been playing playing great, it's, uh, especially Amadon. I mean, Amadon is, you know, three catches a day already. Seems like a lot more. And Chase Reddick has been spot on so far today. So the future looks very bright at Chestnut Hill as we are to second and ten, ball at the 42. On the late give to Andre Williams, and he is just taken down by Darrell Smith. <laughs> A one-yard loss on the play. See, I love when I see defensive coaches and offensive coaches doing something different. You know, don't just sit back and, and let people attack you. Come after them, make them adjust to what you're doing. And that's what Syracuse did right there. Great job by, by Scott Stafford and the defensive staff. I think it's interesting that both their stud linebackers, Darrell Smith and Doug Hogue, former running backs. Coach Marone came in and said, you guys are good, but I got somewhere else I'd like you to play. You know, that can help these guys out because they can recognize what, what running backs are trying to do and make it a lot easier for them to make plays. On third and 15, Reddick comes out firing. Swigert on the out, outside. He will not have enough for a first down. He'll pick up about six and a half yards, and Boston College will have to punt it away. Mike Holmes on the coverage for the Orange. Well, that time they made the tackle. That, when you make tackles in this game, things are going to happen in a very positive way for you. Good job by the Syracuse defense. So Ryan Quigley comes on for the first time today, the junior from Little River, South Carolina, to punt it away. Home standing back deep to receive. And the ball checks up just inside the 20-yard line as we check in with Reese Davis back in the studio. Taco Bell studio update. The Big Ten will be settled today. Michigan State hoping to get a share. Edwin Baker against Penn State. Going in, and Spartans on top, 7-3. If they win, they get no worse than a share of the Big Ten title. They would love for Ohio State to lose, and Michigan has been moving on the Buckeyes scoreless late in the first quarter. All right, thank you, Reese. Boston College on top, 3-0. Syracuse getting the ball for the second time. Nassif dumps it on down low to DeLong Carter. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Eight-yard pickup as Luke Keatley and Kevin Pierre-Louis combine to make the stop. So one quarter complete here in the Carrier Dome. Boston College on top and controlling the ball. We'll be back after this. Friday as Boston College on top of Syracuse three nothing Syracuse with their second possession of the game here as we start the second quarter DeLon Carter up the middle doesn't find much running there he'll pick up three yards you talk about Syracuse this year and we had a chance to talk with coach Marone who's doing a fantastic job here for the Orange but they have ten players that were supposed to contribute this year that are out for the season because of injury well that's that's really tough I mean, anytime you're depending on especially upperclassmen right and they're not there for you that makes it a very difficult thing for the coaching staff to do what they really want to do when it comes to game day so a first down for Syracuse ball resting at the 28 Carter again nice piece of running there as he gets out to about the 38 yard line brought down by Mark Herslick, number 94, six-yard pickup. Well, you know, I had the opportunity to talk to Tyrone Wheatley about uh, Dylan Carter, and he told me when he got here, he literally had to teach this guy how to read when it comes to the, to the zone runs. When the defensive tackle went this way, you went that way. You can see there, he's making very quick, shifty moves um, in the line of scrimmage, and uh, that's a beautiful thing. Tyrone Wheatley on the staff for Coach Marone. Oh, it's teammate of mine back in the day. On the hard snap, they give the ball in the delay to Antoine Bailey. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Demix Scafe makes the stop for Boston College. Tyrone Wheatley, one of the greats out of Michigan. You know, flashback to 1993, Rose Bowl versus Washington. Tyrone Wheatley. The beast, as he, we like to call He had runs of 56, 88, and 24, was the name the game's MVP. 235 yards rushing that day. Final score, Michigan 38-31 over the Huskies. 
Well, you know, when he came to the Raiders, he really hadn't had a great career up until that point. But, man, he had three, four years with us that were really dynamic. And he's got some young players of his own in his family, five kids, and two of them can flat out play some ball. Well, his young kid, TJ, is now 6'3 and 13 years old. 13. Oh, man, what a beast this kid is going to be. And if you shake hands with Tyrone Wheatley, you better give him your all because it's like putting your hand in a catcher's glove. He's got some mitts. So Syracuse turned away, making it a fourth and one. They'll punt it away. Billy Swiger sitting back deep for the Eagles. Swiger checks up and it takes a Syracuse bounce and then some all the way down to the five yard line for a 56 yard punt and no return. As a punt returner, you hate to see punt returners Letting balls hit the floor. So Boston College holding on to a 3 0 lead in the second quarter, and check out this action. Big savings continue this weekend at Bass Pro Shops during our Super Saturday and Super Sunday events with free giveaways to the first 100 customers, plus hourly drawings for great prizes, including an Arctic Cat ATV. Find out more at BassPro.com slash super. This is a 19-foot subalpine fur. This year, we have our own personal Santa. We've done the whole cardboard reindeer thing, so, you know. It's a 60s postmodern gingerbread house. It's worth it. In a season marked by overindulging and overspending. I'll wait here for him. Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2011 Acura MDX for well-qualified customers. <laughs> this? is the jungle, disguised as a wedding, but a jungle nonetheless. And here there are two types of tigers, one who goes straight to the prize, and the one who gets the prize to come to him. to wish you a very happy holiday season and I hope that the coming year will be the best year of your life and I hope that the new year will be filled with love and good health if you drive get the Oklahoma Oklahoma State game Bedlam Tim Brown played a few of those Notre Dame Trojans yeah. I understand you were 4-0 against the Trojans 4-0 baby on first down mm. take it to the ground game and Darrell Smith says hello to the freshman Andre Williams a gain of just one well, it looks like these linebackers are starting to just inch up a little bit, and now they're putting themselves in a position to make the plays a lot closer to the line of scrimmage and not catching the running backs as they get to them. Talk about that Notre Dame game, man. 24 years ago today, we turned that thing around at Notre Dame, so we need to turn it around now. It's going to start tonight, Todd. You feel good about I'm that. I feel good about it. Off the right-hand side, they'll stay with the running game. And not much going there. Shamarco Thomas on the stop for one yard pickup. And we're off to speak with Reese Davis. Todd, the team that controls its destiny in the Big East, the Yukon Huskies against Cincinnati. Zach Frazier out of the backfield. Big Anthony Sherman, the fullback. They don't run him much, but they use him as a pass receiver. Touchdown grab. If Yukon wins out this game in South Florida, the Huskies go to the BCS. How about that? Wow. Yukon could be looking at a BCS yes. trip this year. That's amazing. Nice work, Coach Edsel. Big third and eight here at the Carrier Dome. Reddick looking, getting pressure. He steps up in the pocket and taken down from behind for just a two-yard gain. How about the freshman we talked about for Boston College? Syracuse has a few good ones. Number 11, Marquis Sprill, making the stop. Well, what a great play by this kid. It's called a retract. Once that quarterback go, go past you, retract your steps and get there and make the play, and that's what he does there. And he had a lot of room to run if Spruill yes, doesn't make did. that stop. So Ryan Quigley on to punt it away for the Eagles out of his own end zone. 
Holmes at the 48. Good. And Holmes is knocked back to about the 50-yard line, a 48-yard punt, and no return. Flag on the play. We'll get this sorted out. Our referee on the night, Tom Zamorski out of the ACC. And I'm sure these fellows are happy to be indoors today. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> I'm telling you, that wind. Oh, whew. my goodness. Just from the car to the door was... was Turn the tough. kick. Holding. 38 of the receiving team. 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Well, in talking with head coach Doug Marone of Syracuse, that was not on the goals that he told me. He said their goals this year have a winning season, check, go to a bowl game. They're in line to do that. But he said we need to trust one another, force at least two turnovers, and have solid special team play. And that is not solid special team no, play. No, that, that, anytime you got holding, someone is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's for sure. They get Ryan Ahern, a senior on the squad who was honored just before the kickoff senior day with his folks and uh coach Brown's going to go honor him with a few comments on that play i used to tell my guys when i was returning punts don't hold let me beat them <laughs> that's something i had too many guys taking that taking me literally on that <laughs> massive out of the backfield dumps it off to prince tyson gully another freshman playing brought down by mark herslick for a four and a half yard gain prince tyson gully interesting story the freshman out of akron ohio who came into the season and, and he told the SID, oh, yeah, I'm Tyson Goley, and went to, the, went to sue the SIDs, and she said, hey, by the way, my name's Prince, Prince. Tyson Goley. I don't know how you forget that, but if I had a name like that, I'd Thank get to use that more often. <laughs> Just add that to the, uh, to the list. <laughs> Second down and six. Nassa getting pressure, and this time has to throw it away. Demix Scafe, a very consistent player, the senior out of Windsor, Connecticut, on the pressure. Well, that was a great job by Nassib. Even though that was an incomplete pass, sure. he had a chance to try and squeeze it in there. Ball could have gotten tipped, possibly interception. He did the very smart thing there, throw the ball away, give you a chance, set a chance, give the team a chance. Third and seven, third and six now. So third down and six, ball resting at the 44-yard line. NASA draws back, and it was great coverage right there. Number 25 for Boston College came up. Chris Fox, the senior from Hull, Mass, and got a hand in there. Tim Fox is set and knocks the ball free. You know, one thing I've learned going through my, uh, my college, going through my first year of doing this in college football, Todd, is sometimes the coaches can give the players a better play. And that's the situation there where it was really a one-man route versus his own coverage, you know. It's, come on, coach, help me out a little bit is all I'm asking. <laughs> Rob Long set to punt it away for Syracuse, Ooh. and another one off the right side of his foot, and it goes way out. Coach Spaz is over there ready to help him spot where it went out. <laughs> so just about a 23 and a half yard punt, and it'll give solid field position for Boston College, and they will get the ball back and try to get their offense rolling. 3 nothing. It's a baseball game here at the Carrier Dome. 9.43 to play here in the first half. This is a double-vented, quad-chambered chestnut roaster. Top of the line from Furcon. It's Italian. It's a very exclusive item. The chestnut, she's a fickle beast. But uh, to tame her... In a season marked by overindulging and overspending, Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. You know her. We know diamonds. Together, we'll make her holiday. That's why only Zales is the diamond store, where you'll get an extra 10% off store-wide now through Sunday. Yes. Two games yesterday, three tomorrow. On first and ten. Reddick rolling out, has a man wide open in the flats. Chris Pentale, the sophomore from Wayne, New Jersey. A 14-yard pickup. Max Suter pushes him out, and we're off to chat with Reese Davis again. Todd, the Land Grant Trophy, a share of the Big Ten title, everything at stake for the Spartans in Happy Valley. Michigan State's Kirk Cousins to a wide open B.J. Cunningham. I think the technical term for that is busted coverage. 14-3 Spartans. Ohio State with a field goal lead on Michigan. They've just started the second quarter on ABC. 
All right, thank you, Reese. We will wait till the end of the day for the Big Ten to shake out because there's all kinds of scenarios, but I think everyone's in the agreement that if you have to choose someone's position, Wisconsin's probably got the best shot. Yeah, I believe if they win, they're going to be in, so it's a good spot for them to be in. First and ten. Reddick unleashes, has a man down there and off the hands of the freshman, Alex Amadon. He was well covered. Ball hit him in the hands, and as the great Dan Fouts used to say, if it hits you in the hands, you should be able to catch you it. you got to bring that one in. Great, great effort down the field by mm. number 28, Wilkes. I think he got a fingertip on that ball. Just enough to, oh, no, he did not. Mike Holmes had the hand up there and distracted him momentarily. Now we can call Amadon the freshman. Now he's looking like the freshman on that play. So we'll bring up a second down and 10 ball at the 49 of Syracuse. Andre Williams off the left hand side and the freshman with a nice piece of running. Good enough for 10 yards. Doug Hogue makes the stop and it looks like they will give him the spot. Another first down for Boston College. Well, this kid, Andre Williams, is playing great football for Boston College today. You know, no one can replace what Harris was doing for this team, but he is coming in today and has played a solid game of football so far. Montel Harris, the junior from Jacksonville, Florida, had knee surgery after a great game last week. 24 for 114 yards and a touchdown. His season is done. Out of the eye formation, it's Andre Williams again, the freshman from Pennsylvania who gets the carry. Doug Hogue makes the stop. Well, this is what they're missing with Montel Harris back home recuperating. That is a bulk of offense, Tim. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you watch these guys on film, is, is Harris left, Harris right, Harris in the flat, screen pass to Harris. They were really trying to get this kid the ball, and rightfully so, because, man, I mean, when he got the ball in his hands, something ex exciting was going to happen. And in case you're wondering, no relation, but I would claim him as family, <laughs> the way he plays. <laughs> Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator. Boston College on second and eight Rennick back to pass has time has a man and he was looking for MoMA who was open but the pass just not there Mike Holmes on the coverage wow he had McCluskey so open in the flat right there there was literally no one within 20 yards of McCluskey and he would have ran for another 15 yards before anyone got close to him so Chase Reddick the freshman from San Clemente California his issues here in the first half had a great first quarter on that opening drive but now they're looking at a third and eight and not quite in field goal range but the Eagles are three for five on third down conversions for the day Reddick out of the gun pumps once pressure coming and his receiver breaks it off and it'll be intercepted Kevin Scott picks it off for the Orange. Well, he was looking for Jonathan Coleman, the redshirt freshman out of the Bronx, New York, and Coleman broke the pass, broke the play off, and the ball was already in the air. Yeah, but it looked, it looked to me as if he had enough time to see that, that Coleman had broke the route off, but he threw the ball every, anyway. I don't know if he, he didn't think the defender could get to the ball, but, man, that's not a play you want to make in that situation. He had a chance to run for a couple yards that could have put him in a possible field goal situation there. Plenty of green grass in front of him, but he decides to throw the ball. And Coach Spaz is right. talking to his young freshman. Hey, freshman, Son. throw the ball away, <laughs> will you? <laughs> man alive. First and ten from the one. And it's good to see DeLon Carter, who came off the field on their last possession, limping off. Okoroha makes the stop for a five-yard gain. Delon Carter, we saw him on that last possession. He had to come off with his shoe off, and he was on the sideline doing a little light jogging. So all checks yeah. out well there. I don't know when that bowl game is, but you have until then to get ready. So you're going to play today, Delon. You do not come off the field. Second down and five. Ball at the six. NASA rolls out. Has Nick Provo in the flat. One of their two talented tight ends for a six-yard gain and a first down for the Orange. And, and that's the play when you have a decent running game going. They have to honor when that back is going the opposite way. And you come out of there with a little naked bootleg. Just you and the, and the tight end make the easy throw. 
First down. Let's keep this thing moving. And that bowl you're talking about, the Pinstripe Bowl, Yankee Stadium, December 30th is the date for that. You can see that on the ESPN family of networks. It's Carter up the middle. And he will pick up about three yards as we check in with Reese Davis for an update on the Virginia Virginia Tech game. Well, the Hokies trying to finish the ACC season undefeated. You got a quick glimpse of Brian Steinspring, the Hokies' offensive coordinator, head in his hands. Hey, Brian, relax. You give it to Ryan Williams. All good. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. Up 7-0 early in the second quarter. South Florida and Miami are scoreless in the second. Thank you, Reese. Back in the Carrier Dome. On a first down, the Q's go back to the running game. This is Antoine Bailey off the left-hand side, and he finds some running room there. Good for seven yards. Luke Keekley, the talented sophomore, makes a stop. I was hoping Reese was going to give us that hokey high cheer. He's got that thing down. Got that thing down. Well, this kid, Antoine Bailey, they tell me that he were, they were, he's reminded of Charlie Garner when they, when they talk about him and, and what he can do in the offensive setting. Everybody thinks about Charlie Garner, so that means this guy has to be tough, quick, and able to make explosive plays. First and 10 from the 23. And the quarterback, Ryan Nask, goes down. Feet got tangled, but he goes down for a, a seven-yard loss, and that'll back the ball up to about the 18-yard line. Good pressure up front coming from Demix Cafe and Caleb Ramsey. Right? Yes, there. Bartholomew got it. Bartholomew Shebane anchoring that left-hand side. We haven't called Keekless name so far today. Let's see what he's doing right here. On second down, Nassif dumps it out of the backfield. Boy, that was a smart play by the running back, Antoine Bailey, because that ball looked to be live coming out of the backfield. That was definitely look, looking like a backwards pass there. Boy, he got a good bounce. Bounce right up to him. There was a play yesterday in the high school game that I was watching, the, the Irish and the Huskies, and that was a design play. They bounced it out there, and everyone stopped. Oh, yeah. That was a to keep playing. You call that a fortuitous bounce? Fortuitous bounce. Third down and seven for the orange ball, resting just outside the 25. And flags come out before the play can get underway. Going to challenge. It looks like Bailey may have stepped out two or three yards prior to where they marked it. The Boston College head coach is challenging the ruling on the field that the pass was backwards. Oh, he's going to challenge that. So his thinking here is if it's a forward pass, obviously it's an incomplete. If it's a backward pass, it's a it's a great play. Bailey comes out of the backfield. So they use your quarterback right there at the 14. That's definitely back. That's no doubt about that. <laughs> Good challenge. I mean, do you take that chance? I would have challenged. He went out actually on the 28 yard line. Exactly. That's I would have challenged that more, <laughs> more so than the than the backwards pass. That's going to be too close. Now they have to find some evidence that that didn't happen, and I don't think we can see that. He's he's standing on the 40. Uh, 15, 14 and a half, and the ball lands on the 14, so that's after him tipping it. All right, when he releases the ball, it looks like he's right straddling the 14. So where's the ball? Let's call it right at the 14. Where does it hit? And he tips it, and it still lands. Off his hands. So that's going to be, how do you overturn that? Indisputable video evidence, and I agree with you. It looked like that Bailey had stepped out a couple yards earlier when he planted his foot and cut back in. Boston College will be charged with a timeout, their second charge down out of the first half, and they have lost their uh, opportunity to challenge during the remainder of the game. So Coach Spaziani loses his challenge and the timeout. That definitely wasn't worth it. Not worth it. Yeah. I, no. If you're going to lose all that for the rest of the game, no. Not for, not for. <laughs> we'll see if that comes back to haunt Coach Spaz. Meanwhile, it's a third and seven. The ball stays at the 26-yard line. Nassif with time. And he was 
looking for Alec Lemon, who's playing with a soft cast on that left wrist. Donnie Flegg, the junior from Cleveland, Ohio, on the coverage. And Syracuse 0 for 4 on third down conversions today. Well, that's not going to get it done. I mean, third downs, you have to make plays on third down. They have not even tried to get the ball to Van Chu. Now, I know they were talking about, you know, the kid that's been beat up. But, man, if he is the guy to make plays for you, you know, third down, you at least have to look at him then. Billy Swigert back deep to the Eagles. This time, Rob Long gets one square away. He is absolutely drilled. Flag comes out immediately. And we saw this last night in several games. There is no halo rule in college football, but you do have to let the receiver have an opportunity to catch the ball after a 65-yard punt. Graham Dorian, number 10, on the hit. Are they saying he called fair catch? Kick catch interference against the kicking team. 15 yards to the spot of the foul. First down. Dorian Graham checked that. The former safety now playing wide receiver. And they'll have Syracuse re-kick. Time to recognize today's Wells Fargo Advisors investment in the classroom. So with 4-10 to play here in the first half, Boston College on top. The play one more time in question. We'll be back after this. These are stitched from 800 thread count Egyptian linen, of course. 44 hanging from the rafters here in the Carrier Dome. A lot of great men have worn that number, and that uh, that number means a lot on this campus. Well, no doubt about that. Rightfully so. When you look at look at the men who have worn that number. It should mean a lot. That's for sure. Jim Brown, Ernie Davis. This is obviously Ernie Davis Legends Field renamed this year on the 30th anniversary of the Carrier Dome being open. So a costly penalty. Ball at the 49 on a first and 10. Reddick finds Lars Anderson. He'll pick up about two yards, and Philip Thomas makes a stop. It's now time for a Sports Center right now. And for that, we check in with Reese. All right, Don, that's Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover. Ohio State's up on Michigan 10 0. Terrell Pryor at Dane Sonsenbacher for a touchdown, but Michigan is on the one half yard line right now, trying to draw a little bit closer. Mizzou and Kansas playing for the 119th time. Devin Moore going in here to start the scoring. 14 0 Tigers at the moment. Reddick out of the gun, getting pressure, steps up. This time he will run. And slides down about at the 40 for a nine-yard pickup. You know, people bang on the Oregon Ducks in their uniforms. I don't know if I could really sell those Ohio State throwbacks. I don't know <laughs> I don't if those know. are throwbacks or someone <laughs> just didn't get the memo of the laundry. What, what's your take? Know. Hey, those are ugly. I'll just I'll just be on record as saying that. Come on, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have such great uniforms anyway, Ohio yes. State. Yes. Now why why would, you mess with that why helmet? Why would you do that? Could you imagine Michigan changing their helmet for a game? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah. Option helmet? No way. Andrew Lewis, the player down on the field for Syracuse. And now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, play along with us if you'd like. Who was the last player to wear number 44 at Syracuse? The last player to wear number 44 at Syracuse. I can see the wheels turning in Tim Brown's head right now. Mm. See, it's not a trick question, or is it? See, I'm trying to go back to the movie now, you know. Oh, <laughs> I just watched the Express again about a couple weeks ago. That's a great movie. <laughs> huh. it, it's kind of a trick question, but not, because we showed you all the history. I think I know. And I don't know much, but I think I know. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the answer a little later on the broadcast here. First and ten, an equipment change for the quarterback Chase Reddick as he removes the knee brace. I'll tell you what, this freshman is something else. Andre Williams breaking it off the right hand side. Finally pushed out of bounds and out the 14, Philip Thomas, but a 24-yard pickup. And did you see the spin at point of contact from the freshman? The thing I like about him that's even 
a little better than what Harris does. This guy is a little bit more physical. Harris to jump around a tackle and he's able to make plays, but this guy, Williams, he'll run you over. He'll put that helmet on your forehead and then bounce off of you and still make some plays like he does here. Great job by the young kid. 17 carries and 66 yards, and the coaches said we have faith in him. First down inside the 20 to go to the fullback, McCluskey. Big power runner gets it down to about the 11-yard line. Number 25, Darrell Smith makes the stop. Three-yard gain. Now that's the trade-off with not having Harris. Instead of that being Williams, now that's McCluskey. And, you know, we get a two-yard gain there. And with that hole that was there, man, Williams could have put his foot on the ground and gotten the end zone. And that's a freshman. Andre Williams, 6 0 16 Second down and eight. Redding out of the gun. Oh, he was wide open. And I can hear Reese Davis now saying a little trickeration. Billy Swigert threw the strike, and Chris Pantale, the sophomore out of Wayne, New Jersey, just couldn't find the gloves. Well, as a receiver, we all have that play in the back of our heads. And it's not a great feeling, that's for sure. He was wide open. That's tough. And that's those catches are harder than the, than the ones that you're covered because you're sitting there going, I got an easy touchdown. All I have to do is make the catch. And man, that alive. was that was turned the head before he was smelling ends. Mm. So that brings up a big third down. Third and eight. Reddick looking. He was looking for the freshman Alex Amadon, but just spun that one right into the ground, so they will have to settle for the field goal attempt. Mike Holmes on the coverage for Syracuse. Well, that man's not happy about it. Chris Pantale is obviously not going to be happy about it, but it it's, could be worse. It could be the Boise State field goal kicker. <laughs> right. Poor kid. Definitely wouldn't want to be him to this morning, that's oh. for sure. He what set that program back 10 years. 29-yard field goal attempt from Nate Freeze. And Freeze puts it through. Now, the question I have at Reno, they've got the short field goal post. Why? I don't know. Why do you have the short ones? Folks and boys, you would like to know that. 6 nothing, Boston College on top of Syracuse. Boston College, I've been challenged more than ever before. I've worked on groundbreaking scientific research. I've experienced faith in action. I've shared the joy of victory. Boston College. I've pursued my passion for the arts. I've helped people in need. I've rallied around a student fighting cancer. At a world-class university in a great American city. I've been inspired to think and act and to make the world a better place. What will you do? Celebrating its sixth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Gold Nets, Allstate makes a contribution to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. And that's all we've had so far. Field goal, 6-0 Boston College on top as we've got... A few minutes to play here, and that, that kind of says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, you don't want to see this kid like this, though. You got it's the second quarter, you yeah. got a lot of football to be playing. A coach, somebody should be up to this kid. Like, yeah. come on, man, let's go. You know, I mean, hey, I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough to uh, to make a play like that. 
Yeah, but that's what this game is about. Look at Coach. That is a good that's, coach. That's what I'm saying. Coach, get him up. He he is a he's a classic. I'll tell you, Coach Spaz is one of a kind. I had a chance to do the ACC championships a couple of years ago, and, and in the same situation, a player was down on himself, and Coach went over there, and I listened to him tell a joke. He just sat there and right. told the kid a funny joke and made him smile. He said, now let's get back out there and get after it. You have to remember, this is a game. Prince Tyson Gully out to about the 27-yard line as we check in with Reese Davis. Todd Bud Light halftime report is on the way. The Big Ten and the Big East up for grabs. Big Ten will be settled. We'll have a better picture of the Big East. UConn has the lead on Cincinnati at the moment. Michigan State's playing very well, so too Ohio State. And we'll have much more on the Friday fallout. Boise State's collapse, Auburn's comeback, and where that leaves us in the BCS picture. Mark and Lou, join me. we see you in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Reese. On first and ten, Syracuse again a footwork issue with the quarterback Ryan Nassib in the center, Ryan Bartholomew. So the two Ryans getting together, but not the way they'd like. Yeah, we, this is a problem we should have worked out by now. It's second down and 13. Well, well, this time the right guard, the right guard got him. Right guard got him Andrew Tiller. <laughs> on second down, Nassib was looking for Van Chu. Gonzago Lamanchi. And you talked about him being banged up. They've gone to him a lot this year, and uh, they just got to ride him out, hopefully get him healthy and at 100% by the time they roll into a bowl game. Yeah, he's a slight built fella, you know, 6 feet, 175 pounds. Has uh, really carried the team catching passes this year. His body just has not responded to, to all the meetings that, he, that he's been taking throughout the game. So uh, they're hoping that he can get through this game and get him ready for the bowl game and, and move him on from there. On third and 13, NASA back. Has a man dropped back on the release back out of the back of the field. That's why Bailey. And Bailey's out there close to a first down. Caleb Ramsey makes the stop. And by virtue of that stumble, it's not going to be enough for the yardage for the first down. It'll be about 12 yard gain, and Frank Spaziani burns the last time out. 30 seconds time back. While there's a timeout on the field, earlier we asked you in our AFLAC trivia question, who was the last player to wear number 44 at Syracuse? You want to fire off? I'm going to say Floyd Little. Floyd Little? I was going to go with Rob Conrad. Oh, yeah. All right, I guess I'll go with that. I guess got to commit. I'm going to go yeah. with Rob Conrad. But, and look at that. The Miracle Team. Wow. Well, the reason why I thought that was because I, I thought, you know, that number's got to go away with Jim Brown and with, with Ernie Davis. You can't touch that number. But Rob Conrad wore it in 1998. Is that right? They didn't retire that number to 2005. Unless Mr. Conrad talked to uh, Jim Brown and said, Mr. Brown, do you mind? <laughs> but the rumor around town is that Jim Brown, uh, maybe the greatest football player of all time, was an even better lacrosse player. That's what I hear. I've heard people tell you that from Jim Brown. He Jim was a phenomenal <laughs> lacrosse player. And they, they don't want to play some lacrosse here at Syracuse. Had to change the rules for him. Long on the punt, Swigert standing back deep, and this time Long gets away a beautiful punt. The fair catch is made by Swigert all the way back at the 12. So with 43 seconds to play, Boston College with no timeouts will take over. Well, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, it's a battle of NFC West rivals as the San Francisco 49ers battle the Arizona Cardinals at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served up by Applebee's. Two teams trying to find their way in the NFC. Boy, I, you may have a 7-9 and nine team yeah, make, the that's part, true. make the win the division out there. So I don't know if that's ever been done before. Col Coach Holch likes to call that parody. <laughs> say, that's just good. That's just good parody. <laughs> I heard him say that about the Big East yesterday. So that's just good parody. <laughs> First and ten. Reddick will take this one under center, and they'll keep it on the ground with the freshman Andre Williams filling in for the injured Montel Harris. Shamarco Thomas on the stop, and a four-yard pickup. So the clock continues to run. Head coach Doug Marone has three timeouts. Take him to the locker room? No. Why? Why take him to the locker room? You go three and out here, get the ball back at the 45, still have 25 seconds to make something happen. But uh, they're going to let the, the half run out. I, I don't understand that, especially when you're down six nothing. 
So Boston College has a 6-0 lead on Syracuse here in the Carrier Dome, and the Eagles are content to just let this one, to say the Orange content to let this one just run down. Boston College 6 and Syracuse nothing. So with a 6-0 lead, Boston College heads into the locker room here at the Carrier Dome. Now let's join Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May in the studio for the Bud Light Halftime Report. Gentlemen. Central.com. Football presented by Cars.com. 6 nothing here in the Carrier Dome. Boston College on top of Syracuse alongside the 1987 Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown. I'm Todd Harris. Well, not necessarily an offensive explosion, but I like to call this a chess match, Tim. It's it a chess is match. most definitely a chess match. And now it's time for Syracuse to come out and make that big move on the chessboard and make something happen. Boston College dominating time of possession in the first half, keeping the ball for almost 20 minutes and using the young underclassman, Mr. Andre Williams. Yeah, we thought he had to come out and play well for this team, and that he has done. The kid is making every play they ask him to play. Tough physical runs, even more so than, than Montel has. Montel is more of a quick snap back type guy, type guy, but this guy is physical and he will hit you in the head. And one of those situations where it could have been worse had not the play for Terrell Smith. Well, I tell you what, it's something special about guys who have once played on one side of the ball and on the other side. Yeah. They have a great understanding of what's happening to them. And uh, Darrell Smith is making very good plays, shooting it through that line of scrimmage and getting to the running back. Frank Spaziani's crew on top 6-0. As we mentioned, it has not been a real offensive explosion, but his team has looked sharp. Remember, he's got a true freshman at quarterback, a true freshman at tailback, and a true freshman who's been really a primary receiver at wide receiver with Alex Amadon. Meanwhile, for Doug Marone, he has got to find a way to get some points on the board. The good news is Syracuse does get the ball first. Well, you know, they're doing a lot of talk about saving Van Tu. I don't know what they're saving him for at this point. If he's your number one guy, it's time to get him going. And ball goes over the head of Prince Tyson Gully as we take a look at the first half stats here from the Carrier Dome. You know, the one I look at most is at the bottom of the time of possession. It's been dominated by BC, but you look at total yards, 98 for Syracuse, and 43 of those came on their opening drive. Yeah, that's not, uh, <laughs> that's that's showing everybody that we're not getting it done on the offensive side of the ball. They moved the ball forward, and then they have a negative play. Had a couple of times where the quarterback was tripped by his offensive lineman. Those kind of plays cannot happen in the second half. So Nassib goes into center to start the second half. And they'll go to the running game. And Antoine Bailey up the left-hand side. And that big hit as Luke Keekley comes over and pops Bailey for a three-yard gain. And Keekley, remember, played as a true freshman last year. And, uh, you know, it's high praise when your coach, I said, Coach, tell me something about Luke Keekley. He said he's just boy wonder. When your coach calls you boy wonder, <laughs> yeah. that's not bad. Well, this guy, when you watch him on film, he all, he's always around the football. He finds a way to get there, sideline to sideline. He's going to make the tackle. And that time he was able to get to Bailey and put him on the ground. Second down for the Cubes. Nassib has a man wide open, Marcus Sales. Sales cuts it back up, and that's a first down for Syracuse. He gets it out to about the 32-yard line, a nine-and-a-half-yard pickup for the Orange. Well, even though Syracuse, their running game hasn't been fantastic today, anytime you have that fake, the defense has to honor it. And, right. any, and when they do that, it just leaves that backside receiver wide open on a little bootleg play. So from the 33, a fresh set of downs for Syracuse. Bailey, right side. Nice little juke there. Gets himself some room. Kingley knocks him out of bounds at the 47-yard line. But Orange, they got something cooking here in the early in the second half. Well, absolutely. You know, they have Bailey, and now I guess DeLon Carter is, uh, is not recovered from the little injury that he had in the first half. But this Bailey kid, they said that he's quick, he's explosive, he's able to make plays, and we're seeing that now when he get, gets an open field. And with that tackle, Luke Keekley now becomes Boston College's all-time single season tackle leader. First down, stay with the running game. Flag comes out as Bailey picks his way through for a five-yard pickup. Brad Newman on the stop. 
for BC. Holding 74 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. And that'll get an adjustment of the visor from the head coach. <laughs> well, I was, I was watching Keekley the last couple of plays, and anytime he gets a chance to run to the sideline, he is absolutely fantastic. Now, when the play is coming directly at him, he has a more difficult time because he's so tall, these guys are able to get yep. to his legs and cut him down. I think this guy's going to be projected. I know he's still young, got a couple years in college, but I see him being one heck of an outside linebacker at the next level. Put on 10 pounds from last year, the sophomore from Cincinnati. First and 18. Nassib with time. Comes back across the middle, and it's Sales. Marcus Sales who gets it into Boston College territory down to the 46, a 14-yard pickup for Syracuse. Well, so far in this half, this looks like a, a yeah, totally different, different team. Syracuse offensive team here. They're, they have more explosive plays. They're a little bit more wide open in their play calling. Making a couple things happen here. I would like to see the ball in Van Tu's hand. I would be very satisfied if I can just see this guy catch a ball here today. On second and two, Nassib rolling out to his right on the bootleg. Coming down and you'll get your wish. Now I'm a happy man. <laughs> Ryan Lindsay on the coverage, but Van Chu gets his first reception of the game, an 18-yarder. Well, this is just a very simple little comeback route off of the uh, bootleg. And uh, when you have speed like Van Chu, Van Chu you have to honor it. And, uh, and you saw the defensive back getting out of there, making sure he didn't get beat deep. First and 10, ball sitting at the 30 at Boston College. It pumps off the right hand side looking left and again it's Marcus Sales number five who comes back to bail him out an 11 yard pickup you talk about halftime adjustments how many adjustments can you really make with the game plan already in place well you know really what it seems like they have done from the offensive standpoint is we're going to open it up a little bit that's if we're going to make you make some plays and they're throwing the ball a little bit more freely and this Bailey kid has really come in and, and made some delays for him from the running back position. You see that Boston College doing a great job in the last 19 quarters. So on first and 10, NASA back to pass. Has plenty of time. He'll release it out there. And Bailey's there to receive it. A nice set of hands on this young man as he gets all the way down to the 15-yard line, a five-yard pickup. Well, now I'm seeing the Charlie, the Charlie Garner uh, representation that they're talking about here because that was one heck of a play by the young man. Nice catch over his shoulders. And once he gets the ball in his hand, the explosiveness is nice. Second down and five. Second down and five. Ball of the 15 for Syracuse. And this time, Antoine Bailey, the junior from Washington, D.C., will just tuck it up the middle and pick up about two and a half yards. Once again, Luke Keekley involved on the tackle. Well, this guy diagnoses a run so well. When you watch him on film, it's like he knows exactly what's happening with the run scheme, and he's able to just play the piano over these defensive players and get to the back and make the hit. And a bit of problems of the substitution, so Doug Marone has to call a timeout. With 10.31 to play here in the third quarter, Boston College on top 6-0, but Syracuse is in the red zone. Now, more than ever, you want to keep your loved ones safe and secure. Give them the gift of financial security from New York Life. We've been protecting families for over 165 years. New York Life, the company you keep. Open up a Cadillac during our season's best sales event and receive the gift of asphalt. Experience the exhilarating Cadillac CTS with a direct injection V6. It's the one gift you can open up all year long. See your Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer, backed by the peace of mind that only comes from Cadillac Premium Care Maintenance. The season's best sales event from Cadillac. What's your 99? Introducing Wendy's new 99 cent everyday value menu. My, my, my 99. My, my, my 99. How about a beefy double stack? 99. 
or maybe a crispy chicken sandwich. Now there are seven tasty choices for 99 cents. 99! Why 99? How much? 99! Real choices, real value, every day. You know it's real. You have dreams for your children. Don't let times like these stand in the way of them. Protect your family with the gift of financial security, backed by the highest possible ratings for financial strength. New York Life, the company you keep. USA Prime Credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my card. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. And you could be my go-to guy. Or girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my card. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Rank number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. Is it the end of TV as you know it? It's the LG Infinia, the world's first full LED 3D TV, and the only LED TV that's THX certified for picture quality. So, is it a TV or something better? College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. In Syracuse inside the Carrier Dome, 6-0 Boston College on top, but Syracuse has taken the opening drive here in the second half, and they are all the way down to the 10. On third and one, Bailey gets the call off the left-hand side. Mark's first lift on the tackle, but it's a five-yard pickup, so it becomes first and goal for the Orange. Well, the little man is geeked up, <laughs> and he is making some tremendous plays for the Syracuse offensive team. It's not easy for a little 5-8 guy to run up in that hole. Good time for Syracuse <laughs> to get their first third-down conversion. First and goal from the seven. Go back to Bailey off the right-hand side. This time he's covered up with a five for a two-yard pickup. Bailey listed at 5'8", 192, and again, you know it, SIDs like I do, you, you always tack on a little, That's a little, little what, an inch and a half, <laughs> two inches, and 10, 15 pounds. Well, I, I played with a guy who was 5'8", 190, Napoleon Kaufman, and he was, man, what a beast. <laughs> you know, this guy would hit the hole and be gone. Kaufman seemed to have a lot of those same attributes. Second and goal. Bailey cuts Bailey. it back, up the middle, touchdown. A five-yard touchdown for the junior from Washington, D.C. on a beautiful drive to start the second half. Well, you know, what Tyrone really talked about with this, with this group was you have to be able to read the defensive linemen. Don't read your blockers. Read where the helmets of the defensive linemen are going. At that time, he saw where they went, and he cut back the other way, and it was wide open. Crapping on to the extra point. And Syracuse takes the lead 7-6 with 9.32 to play here in the third quarter. Riding the legs of Antoine Bailey, orange on top. Open up a Cadillac during our season's best sales event and receive the gift of asphalt. Experience the exhilarating Cadillac CTS with a direct injection V6. It's the one gift you can open up all year long. See your Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer, backed by the peace of mind that only comes from Cadillac Premium Care Maintenance. The season's best sales event from Cadillac. Are things different now that I'm not crushing quarterbacks every Sunday? Yeah, a little bit, but I still have a taste for greatness. So I love Dr. Pepper. The taste of these 23 flavors can never be equal. Like me. Pizza Perfect Nab. I got it. Donovan. Mike? What? Oh. Oh. Come on, Mike, man. Still got it. There's nothing like a pepper. Trust me. I've sent people to the doctor. Oh. 
There once was a giant grocery store manager who wanted desperately to shrink. Because as it turns out, being a giant isn't all it's cracked up to be. Then one day, he heard about the Boost Mobile monthly unlimited plan with shrinkage. And while it couldn't help him shrink, it did shrink his payments. Shrink your payment to as low as $35 a month when you pay on time. The longer you stay, the less you pay. Boost Mobile. At Black & Decker, we've redesigned the socket set. With 16 socket sizes in one wrench, the Black & Decker ratcheting ready wrench is ready when you are. Only by Black & Decker. There's nothing like a pepper. And some of the fine facilities here in Syracuse, Manly Fieldhouse, and a new weight room, all courtesy of some very generous folks and Dr. Daryl Gross, the athletic director here at Syracuse. He, uh, very intelligent man, brought his talents from USC out to Syracuse. And I'll tell you what, he might be the nicest dressed athletic director what, I've ever he, seen. He is great, man. I had a chance to speak with him before. He took me through that whole game when Notre Dame came back to beat yep. SC. He remembered play by play what happened. So, he's a very smart man. On the kickoff, it's a 17 yard return, and Boston College will take over at about the 22 yard line, and we're off to visit with Reese Davis. Todd, every week we honor the ESPN AT&T All-America Player of the Week. Several nominees from Friday, including Nevada's Rashard Matthews. What a night he had. Ten catches, buck 72, and the Wolfpack upset of number four, Boise State. All you have to do is text vote to 345-345 on your mobile phone. Enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game in January. All right, thank you, Reese. Back in Syracuse, Boston College gets their first shot at the ball, the opening the second half, and they go right to their power running game, and Andre Williams, a freshman, he'll take it out just shy of the 30-yard line. Kevin Scott makes the stop, and a seven-yard pickup player down on the field, and that is Kevin Scott, who just made the tackle. I, going back to that game last night, I could not turn that off, and I know it was going to cost me today. I, need, I needed the beauty sleep, which you can tell didn't help, but, but I couldn't turn that game off. It was mesmerizing, but I'll tell you who needs to get a little love. Colin Kaepernick. Yes, you want to talk about a dual threat quarterback that can just put the fear into a defensive coordinator? That kid is special. Well, I saw him versus Notre Dame last year, and it was, uh, I was trying to figure out where did he come from yeah. because he was lighting ND up. Not that, you know, nobody, everybody's lighting ND up sure. these days, it seems like, but, but I saw him play very good football. Well, wow. Look at that. Andre Williams keeping the play a drive, a freshman spinning off tackles. Philip Thomas finally brings him down, but not before a nine yard pickup. Well, with Boise State losing last night, it'll be interesting as we get ready for the BCS standings to be released tomorrow night. Reese Davis and company will have that for you. Oregon got the win in impressive format as we were watching that game together, Tim. And I told you, give them to about the third quarter when they get those new uniforms broken in and they start opening up. Auburn was so impressive. Cam Newton, what. wow. First and ten. Again, it's the freshman covering up Andre Williams, Darrell Smith on the stop, three-yard gain. The Tostitos BCS standings, and uh, I, I guess the folks in Fort Worth are the beneficiaries. Yeah, they're, of all they're that. the happy ones this morning because there's no doubt that Boise State would have jumped them if sure. they had won last night. So, but all the one-loss teams are in a, in a perfect position sure. now that Boise State was out of it. Second down and eight. Syracuse on top, 7-6. On the draw, Williams, left side. And this young man can run, and he is running to daylight. Finally pushed out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Philip Thomas and Mike Holmes team up to get him out of bounds. He picks up 22 more yards. And this is a true freshman. We <laughs> talked about the loss of Montel Harris, the junior from Jacksonville, out for the season, knee surgery. True freshman comes in and he has given them over 100 yards rushing. What an impressive day this kid has had. I mean, he's inside, he's outside, he's yeah. banging into folks. He's doing everything he needs to do to make this thing happen. Man, that's impressive. 
43 plays for Boston College, 22 of them they put in the hands of the true freshman. He gets a break. McCluskey, the fullback, will get the carry. It's up the middle. And that offensive line for the Eagles is doing a fantastic job. you got to consider the offensive line, their height, average 6'6", weight 313. That's the average. Four of those five positions up front, heavier and taller than the New England Patriots. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Boston College has, has always been known as a team that uh, loves to keep these big, the big uglies, that's what I like to call them. But these big guys know how to come off the ball, they fire at you, and they make it happen. And right now, they have control of this game uh, uh, from the offensive line, instead of standpoint. And the NFL loves the boys from the heights. A lot of them will make their way to play on Sunday. On a second and five, they fake the handoff to Williams. Man was wide open, Chris Pentale. That one would have been a spectacular catch, but as you go back to the first half, he was wide open on the two-yard line and couldn't reel it in. And just a little too much enthusiasm on that ball from Chase Reddy. Yeah, I, I need something good to happen for Pantelli right now because these uh, these last couple of opportunities he's, ha he's had is uh, just not working out for him. Look at the space, though. He gets Man. that. Yeah, that's an easy first down, and he makes somebody miss. He may be able to get to the end zone. He's still running to Utica. <laughs> Big third and five, the ball resting at the 33 of Syracuse. Williams in motion. Reddick, man, wide open, and there you go. <laughs> Chris Pentali, and I'll tell you what, wide open, 36-yard pickup for the Eagles. Well, that's just going to show you. If you keep working, the great things will happen for you. But the kid has had a couple bad plays, but here it's just opened up like the Red Sea for him. Got to be a blown coverage by, by Holger Smith right there. Is a proper vernacular for that busted coverage? Busted coverage, yes. First and goal. <laughs> Give it to the freshman Williams. He bowls his way down to about the one foot line. So that'll bring up a second down and goal. So BC answering back. Syracuse takes the opening kickoff and went all the way down to put their first points on the board after trailing 6-0. Syracuse on top as they were trailing 6-0 at the half. BC now with the ball. Second and goal. Ball at the one foot line. Great play action down right here. Safety came up and just popped Andre Williams right at the line. Boy, and Smith came in and just finished the deal. What a great hit. Give credit to Darrell Smith there for keeping him out. time he punches it in touchdown Boston College well once again when it was on the line what did they run right behind our man Costanzo Anthony Costanzo number 74 <laughs> the left tackle uh, they tried it twi twice to the right it didn't work out so let's go behind the guy that we, that we know can make it happen and that he did six again. seven three oh eight wow that's a big man so Boston College reclaims the lead as Nate Freeze comes on for the extra point. So 13-7, 444 to play here in the Carrier Dome. Alongside 1987 Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown. I'm Todd Harris. Glad to have you with us. And Boston College surging ahead using the youth of Andre Williams, a true freshman, pushes it across. Together, we'll make her holiday. That's why only Zales is the Diamond Store, where you'll get an extra 10% off store-wide now through Sunday. Good for 23 yards. Hey, you went to Jared. That's a peerless diamond. The ideal, ideal cut diamond.
What? If you want to create your own one-of-a-kind ring, get to Jared this Friday through Monday because you can receive Get Set and Diamonds rewards up to $1,000 toward a beautiful diamond setting when you buy your diamond at Jared. Choose from thousands of diamonds and hundreds of settings. Get up to a $1,000 reward this Friday through Monday at Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. They killed my brother. I hope you kill them all! This weekend... If you are looking for action, The Rock is back and better than ever. Faster. Read it all. Now playing. This is a double vented, quad chambered chestnut roaster. Top of the line from Forcone. It's Italian. It's a very exclusive item. The chestnut, she's a fickle beast. But uh, to tame her, in a season marked by overindulging and overspending, Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. Excitement is back at your Southern California Chevy dealers. Every Sunday, the BCS Countdown Show reveals the exclusive BCS rankings. Be the first to know who's in the driver's seat and who's poised to be this year's BCS buster. Race is setting up for a great finish. The BCS Countdown Show, tomorrow at 8.15 on ESPN. And a lot to talk about tomorrow at the Tostitos. BCS standings are announced. Reese Davis will do the honors, and uh, I, I, we talked about it. TCU's got to be very happy about that, <laughs> and the same for all the one-loss teams. Yes, yes. I mean, they're in a better position now. TCU doesn't have to worry about getting jumped, and now these one-loss teams are just sitting back, hoping that Oregon or Auburn could get right. beat. Let the chaos ensue if that yes. happens. Vince Tyson goalie on the return and the ball comes out and who was involved in that number 40 Luke Keekley well this this kid is just incredible I mean when it comes to when it comes to tackling and diagnosing where balls are going he is uh, he's just unbelievable and being yeah, that just, he's not as fast as Prince he has to make that decision a couple seconds before to get to that position and that he did and was able to cause a fumble. Keekley the sophomore out of St. Xavier High School in Cincinnati a nice pipeline from Cincinnati to Chestnut Hill. On first down they go back to the running game and he'll take it out to about the six Keekley on the stop two yard pickup. We check in with Reese Davis back in the studio. Todd, I want to let you know what's going on in the family of networks. On ESPN2, Michigan State has a 14-3 lead on Penn State. Spartans win. They're guaranteed no worse than a share of the Big Ten title. On ABC, same deal for Ohio State. They're up 24-7. They're on the move in Michigan territory. And on ESPNU, Ja'Cory Harris has returned at quarterback. B.J. Daniels out with a thigh injury to South Florida, up 10-0. Second down, ball tipped in the air, almost picked off. 13-7, BC on top. And a little extracurricular activity down near the goal line after the play's blown dead. 3.50 to play here in the third quarter, and momentum swinging back the way of the Boston College Eagles. Remember, Syracuse took the opening drive of the second half in a beautiful, well-balanced play-calling drive and got their first touchdown, but Boston College answered right back. 13-7, that's where we stand. Anytime you start a kickoff inside your own 10 yard line, it puts everybody in the bad mind mind frame. And now they're struggling to get anything going at this point. Third and nine as Chase Reddick looks on the starting quarterback for Boston College. Nassib with time has a man across the middle. And he makes the catch good enough for a first down. Marcus Sales on the reception and a 16 yard pickup. Dominic Legrand on the stop. So I can definitely see where they, where they when they talk about scales, sales, they talk about his ability to be able to sit in, sit in the holes, recognize the, the zone that's around him, and just make the catch. 
you know, I mean, if you run through that zone, you're going to get knocked out. But you go in there and sit down. It's a nice, easy catch. Get the team a first down. First and ten. And this time, nowhere to run for Antoine Bailey. Dominique Scafé, the senior from Windsor, Connecticut, came up and made the stop. Stop for Get a little chippy. Now, these guys aren't in the same conference, but uh, we, we talked with the coach about this. This is kind of the same recruiting grounds, this Northeast area, and so they're both going after the same athletes, and this means a lot. Maybe a little nicer bowl game with the win. Yes, Syracuse yes. would like to get a nice win for their fans at home. And uh, you can tell, I mean, they're pushing and jawing at each other almost at every play. On the delay, give to Bailey. This time he cuts it back to the inside. Nice piece of running. And Bailey takes it all the way out to the 31-yard line. Antoine Bailey finally tackled by Chris Fox, but not before a 16-yard pickup. Well, you know, Keekley really helped him out here because Keekley jumps up in the hole, and he sees that, and he makes some cuts to his left. And this kid breaks a couple tackles. And man, if not by a very good tackle by Noah right there, he could have been off to the races. Well, DeLon Carter was banged up in the first half. He is on the sideline, no helmet. So on first and ten, they go back to Bailey, and he is tackled about the line of scrimmage, maybe a half a yard pickup. Tonight on ABC, two classic rivalries. The Oklahoma Sooners take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys with a spot in the Big 12 championship game at stake. Some of you will see Notre Dame USC from the LA Coliseum. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 Eastern on ABC. And I know my partner Tim Brown will be watching one of those games. Oh, yeah. Just one of them. Second and nine. <laughs> Nassett finds Van Chu. And Van Chu, a nice open field tackle by Donnie Fletcher, picks up about two, two and a half yards. Well, they got the really, the, the passes right now really safe for Nassett, but uh, they're going to have to open up a little bit here. It's 36. Opportunity for him to make a big play. And you know who's cheering for him right now is the Syracuse defensive unit. They have had a long day on the field. Keep this drive alive. So a third and six, the ball resting just inside the 35 of Syracuse. Lone setbacks, Antoine Bailey, number 29, just in Nassib's right. And that's going to be a false start. Justin Pugh, number 67. And they've also made a change up. False start, 67 in the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Changes on the offensive line as well. Mackie McPherson, the name sounds familiar. Coach Don McPherson's grandson now checking in playing center. Yeah, Mark Herzlick was threatening the blitz right there. Just too much for Pugh to handle. He had to bail out a little bit early. Dick McPherson's grandson. Dick McPherson and I went into the College Football Hall of Fame together. Now you're just bragging. Now you're just showing up. <laughs> the Heisman Trophy wasn't enough. Third and 11 for Syracuse. And nowhere to go for Nassib. He is sacked. Taken down for a four-yard loss. Dameek Scafé involved in making his presence felt. Yeah, Tiller just has to make a little better effort here. Can't let that guy get around you so easily to get to your quarterback. So it's Bobby Swigert back to receive the punt. And Swigert will fail catch it at the 33-yard line. That's where Boston College will take over a 63-yard punt. Here's our drive recap brought to you by Liberty Mutual. BC answers right back. Riding young Andre Williams all the way down the field. Remember, Pantale had the big 30-yard reception, and then it's capped off by the true freshman, Andre Williams. You got a freshman quarterback, freshman tailback, freshman wide receiver. Well, and Boston College is on top, 13-7. You know, I, I think when you have that combination, with, defensively, you really have to put a lot of pressure on these guys. I just don't think Syracuse has, has done that today. Miscommunication in the backfield, no problem for Andre Williams as he scampers out to near another first down. Shamarco Thomas makes the stop. 
45 minutes in the books of the score after three quarters of play. Boston so the third quarter has come to an end here at the Carrier Dome. Boston College on top, 13-7 and looking for more. The 2011 Rose Bowl game, New Year's Day on ESPN. You can always find a positive opportunity when you know where to turn. With Amway, there's opportunity to pursue another path. Where products created for healthier living and the ability to own your own business can help you take steps toward economic freedom. That's the power of positive. That's Amway. To learn more, contact an Amway independent business owner. Open up a Cadillac during our season's best sales event and receive the gift of asphalt. Experience the Cadillac of crossovers, the striking SRX. It's the one gift you can open up all year long. See your Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer, backed by the peace of mind that only comes from Cadillac Premium Care Maintenance. The season's best sales event from Cadillac. I have no idea what this is. Stay thirsty, my friends. Is it the end of TV as you know it? It's the LG Infinia LED TV, the only one that's THX certified for picture quality. So, is it a TV or something better? At Cheez-It, we expect a lot from our cheese. What do you call a cheese that isn't yours? I don't know. Nacho cheese. <laughs> See, because it's not your cheese, but I said nacho. <coughs> la, 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 can't hear you. La, 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 can't hear you. La, 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 can't hear you. That's when I decided to fully invest in my 401k. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake it into every delicious cracker. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. Big savings continue this weekend at Bass Pro Shops during our Super Saturday and Super Sunday events with free giveaways to the first 100 customers, plus hourly drawings for great prizes, including an Arctic Cat ATV. Find out more at BassPro.com slash super. It's the holliest, jolliest, most magical event on television. Brilliant! Be there for the world premiere of Christmas Cupid. Merry Christmas! 25 days of Christmas this December only on ABC Family. Week 12, John, Niners Cardinals, Patrick Willis. He has great playmaking ability. Yeah, good, because Larry Fitzgerald makes plays all over the field. ESPN Monday Night Football, 49ers Cardinals at ESPN College Football from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, as we take a look at the scores by quarter presented by Cars.com. A slow start offensively in the first half with BC taking a 6-0 lead in the half by way of two field goals. And then the offense has got revved up here, and we are now at a 13-7 ball game. BC on top as we start the fourth quarter. Second down and one, and they'll stay with the freshman tailback, Andre Williams, who gets the call. Bud Tribby makes the stop for Syracuse. Syracuse tackle made by Pretty Bud good Tribby. play by Big Tribby getting in there and stopping this Williams because if he gets to the line of scrimmage, this guy has shown that he can uh, push the power a little bit and only needed a half a yard for the first down, but they were able to get him down before he got to it. Third and one for BC. Ball at the 42. formation off the left hand side no problem out to midfield goes Williams Andre Williams, Williams Philip Thomas and Shamarco Thomas team up and it's a nine yard pickup that offensive line we've talked about them their size their strength comparable to that of the New England Patriots 
they are handling the front line of Syracuse. Yes, they are. And again, they go right behind Costanzo once again. But uh, this, this Andre Williams has been super impressive today. I mean, no one expected him to play this well in his first start. But man, he's handled this situation perfectly today. First and 10 from the 50, go back to Williams. That is his 29th carry on the day as he's approaching 140 yards. And this is a guy that we talked with Montel Harris not being able to play. His season is done. We asked him, well, what, what can Andre Williams do for you? And they said, we have faith in him. <laughs> well, I think they see now they have two number ones. Whenever Montel Harris is back uh, next season, they know that they have two guys who can get it done at that position. And that, uh, that should make the coaching staff feel very good. Second down and four, ball now at the 44-yard line. And the young freshman's got some strong legs, takes it out to the 40, a four-yard pickup. Frank Spaziani in talking to him about their running back situation. He's not the kind of coach that, oh, we don't have Montel, we're hanging our head. He says, you know what? Young guys have a way of surprising you sometimes. And I'll tell you, Coach Frank was right. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And this is a system offense where they, they plug in guys, and they can almost get the same uh, the same res responses because of the system that they're playing. But, you know, Andre Williams is just taking it to another level, a whole other level at this point. And this time they let the freshman chase Red Egg, the senior out of San Clemente, California, on the quarterback sneak. He'll pick up the yardage for the first down, make it two. Todd, let, let, me, let me say this, man. You know, this Syracuse offense hasn't been the most explosive thing. <laughs> you know, we've watched a couple games over the weekend that we've seen offense move the ball up and down the field. This Syracuse team is not that. So for this defense to allow even three points puts this offense in a very tough position. So somebody on that side of the ball has to step up. You know, whether they do it with blitzes, whether they do it with individual play, somebody has to make it happen. BC into I formation on first down. Reddick with time, straight to the left. And a nice piece of pursuit as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Shamarco Thomas on cue from Tim Brown steps up and makes a play. No game. Well, you, you have to bring some guys after this guy or, or after the back if you're going to let if you're going if they're going to run the ball. Do not let them no gain on the play. attack you. You have to attack them, and that's what they did on that play. Now, if they go back on second down and, 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 and play catch defense again, it doesn't matter what they did on first down. Clock continues to run. As Tim pointed out, Syracuse not a quick strike offense, and they trail 13-7. Give it to the freshman, Andre Williams on the left-hand side. He'll pick up four yards. Thomas and Darrell Smith team up to make the stop. Well, this is the play of the game for this defense. Yeah. They have to make it happen right here. Too long of a field goal, so they probably would have to punt Boston College win. But if they let him get any yards, they may try a 49, 50 yard field goal. And Darrell Smith already with 10 tackles on the day. The former running back anchoring the defense for the Orange. This is the big one. Third down and seven for Boston College. Ball resting at about the 36 yard line. And when you're in third and long and you can just hand it off to a freshman running back and he gets the yardage, no problem, make it 12, that's not good. No, that's not good. I mean, you can see there, all they were trying to do really is get a couple yards and maybe kick a field goal. I don't think they expected to get 12, 13 yards off of that play. What side they go off of? They went behind our man once again. But no, everybody's equal. Everybody's yeah, equal. Coach is selling yeah, us out, but we were buying it. Down. These coaches down, I tell you. <laughs> First and ten for Boston College ball at the 24. I just the way this young man has stepped up today with a two-yard gain in place of Montel Harris, who is a ACC all-selection second teamer from a year ago. He has been sensational. 32 carries, 157 yards. Well, I'm, I'm going to brag again, Todd. You know, in my 17 years, you know, I went 15 years without missing a game. And one of the reasons why I did that, because the guys behind me were pretty good. And I never wanted them to have the opportunity to go out there and do exactly what we see Andre Williams doing today. A Wally Pipp situation. He's had a chance to shine. He's making the most of it. Second down and seven. Reddick with the quick toss out there looking for Bobby Swigert. Swigert 
unable to come up with the uh, advancement on the ball. They'll give him no gain on there. Bobby Swigert, Alex Amadon doing a fantastic job. What's the theme there? Both freshman. true freshmen. Freshman quarterback, freshman running back. If you're a fan of the BC program, you have to love what's happening. Chestnut Hill, they're getting some yes. good things coming your way in the yes, coming yes, years. Yes. And all Frank Spaziani and his program does is continue to be consistent. They're not dominating, but they consistently win and get to bowl games. Third and eight. Left-hand side, freshman Andre Williams. Good enough for another Boston College first down. Mike Holmes has to come up from the corner position and make the stop. I'm, I'm just really amazed that they're not coming with some form of a run blitz or nothing. They're just sitting back and allowing these guys to attack them. And when you've proven, when it's been proven that you can't stop them, you have to do something a little differently when you're trying to win a football game. Lars Anderson, the tight end, with a great seal block there to spring him loose. So first and ten, clock continues to run for the Eagles, leading 13-7. This kid has to be tired by now, right? I mean, I'll tell you right now who's getting the leftover turkey. <laughs> Four yards more for Andre Williams. So his total continues to go up. The true freshman doing a fantastic job for Frank Spaziani's program. And if your offensive coordinator, Gary Tranquil, the playbook gets real thin right now, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. 34 right and 34 left three times. Freshman at quarterback, freshman at tailback. On the road at Syracuse, leading 13-7. This time they go to the right. Williams cuts it back inside. He's inside the five-yard line. He'll be marked down close to another first down. He'll be just short as we go under eight minutes to play in the ball game. And this is one long, we call it a grinder drive, Tim, because we talked about the defense of Syracuse. They've been out there for a long time. Yeah, they've been out there for a long time. And, you know, they have to make a play. Now their backs are up against the wall. And uh, no matter what, they're going to come away with some points, at least an opportunity to kick a field goal. That puts the Syracuse offense in a very tough spot. Third and one. What do you think the chances are they go left? <laughs> oh, wow. Surprise, surprise. Whoa. And someone does step up and yes. make a play that time. Marquis Sprill, the freshman from Hillside, New Jersey, says, you know, they, BC has the only freshman out here. Well, there's no decision for Spaz here. You kick a field goal, you got a two-score lead. That may almost be ball game if the Syracuse offense can't come up with But you know place. he's got to be thinking about it a little bit. That left-hand <laughs> side has been money. Yeah, well, you always want to end the game on an exclamation point, and that Increase would be it. But uh, uh, this is smart for him to do what he's doing here. So it's Nate Freeze on for the field goal attempt. And Freeze pushes it through. So it's 16-7, BC on top of Syracuse, 6.43 to play in the ball game. It's all about the power game when you got a freshman tailback like Andre Williams, just keep giving him the ball. Driving a brand new Hyundai Sonata puts you in the holiday spirit. Or do the holidays make it more fun to drive the Sonata? Now, during Hyundai holidays, you can lease the 2011 Sonata for just $199 a month. From everyone at Hyundai, have a safe and happy holiday. A million miles matters, and to prove it, we've given Karen an ordinary GPS and Phil, a TomTom -tom GPS with a million more miles of road. Do drivers prefer more miles? We're about to find out. Not again. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Available now. Rated M for Mature. AT&T introduces a new Windows phone with beauty mm. and 
brains. A phone that gets you to the stuff you love faster. Only from AT&T. Rethink possible. A little more, and whoa. Yeah, nice. Agents, what do we have here? An autobotone. I've only heard about these. And? And we can save them hundreds by combining their auto boat and home policies, all under farmers. Exactly. Are these legal? Define legal. Well, can you drive it on a street? Yeah. <laughs> no. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, -dum, bum, 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 bum. Wow, that guy's really staring over here. Must have sold him some carpeting or something. Might check out his bacon neck. Bacon. Sir, lean forward and show Michael Jordan your collar. Oh, see how it's all curled up like bacon in a pan? See how bad this dude looks? What's that? Thank you. Okay. Not us, though, buddy. I lay flats. We're like twins. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, we're not. The lay flat collar. Lays flat, won't bacon. Only from Haynes. Playoff hopes are still alive for the 49ers and Cardinals, but time is running out. It's a must win in the NFC West on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Back inside the Carrier Dome here in Syracuse, 16 7 Boston College on top of Syracuse, 643 to play as we are watching the emergence of a very talented freshman for the Eagles, Andre Williams on the night, approaching 200 yards rushing, filling in for their feature back, Montel Williams, who was lost last week to a knee injury. Prince Tyson goalie one yard deep will bring it out. And he's tripped up just past the 20 yard line. Once again, Keekley involved, a 19 yard return. And we check in with Reese Davis back in the studio. Uh, Sports Center right now, brought to you by Discover. Ohio State leading Michigan 34 7. Game's on ABC right now. Boom Heron going in for a score. He also went 98 for a touchdown that was called back for a hold on the Michigan 10. Turned into a mere 89-yard run. Just set up a field goal. Michigan State also trying to close in on a share of the Big Ten title on ESPN2. B.J. Cunningham making the touchdown grab. is 21-10. Sparty. Mm. On first and 10, Syracuse goes to their own form of the running game. Now, DeLon Carter, who started the game, got banged up before the first half. We have not seen him, and it's a two-yard pickup for Antoine Bailey. Well, we see him, but we see him with his helmet in his hand, <laughs> not on the football field. And, you know, talking to the coaches, they talked about out-scheming defense as well. It's time out for out-scheming. Now it's time to, to make some plays, and somebody has to come up with some big plays for, for Syracuse. Carter on the day, just six carries. Second and eight. Nassib finds his release on the side, and he goes to his tight end, Jose Cruz, the senior from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, for a seven-yard pickup. Well, he wanted to go deep to sales there, but there was very good coverage by the BC secondary. Gate to the 29-yard line. And I'll just call him old. Because we're not going to mess with his last name. <laughs> you didn't practice that? <laughs> Okichuku Okoroha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to be called old, so that's what we're calling. They call him old. I call him <laughs> Okichuku Okoroha. <laughs> Nassib on a third and two was looking for Nick Provo. It went through his hand, so that'll bring up a fourth and two. Mark Herzlick on the coverage. Mark Herzlick, go uh, you know, you talk about him, if you aren't familiar with his story, one of the best players in the ACC. And then last year he sits out because of Ewing sarcoma, a bone, bone cancer, and they put titanium rod in his leg. We, we asked the coaches about him. He's back on the field playing, beat the cancer. Coach says he's just a miracle. Mark Herzlick is just plain and simple a miracle. And in the meantime, instead of wallowing about woe is me, he raises $200,000 right, for right. cancer research. Well, I, it's just one wow. of the more fantastic stories you're going to ever hear in college football. Bobby Swigert back to receive. He'll call the fair catch, and he does so at the 30. The boos you heard are the fans who are not happy about. They did not go for it on fourth and two. After the 60-yard punt, BC will take over when we return to the Carrier Dome. Laser. From an early age, Timothy Richmond understood that with knowledge comes confidence. 
In junior high, while abroad, he explained how jellyfish stings can be neutralized with vinegar. In perfect Italian. As an adult, Timothy's knowledge of storm cells and tornadoes saved the Newbury Prep cheerleading squad. But when it came time to buy a new car, he was just as nervous as the rest of us. So Timothy got his knowledge at cars.com, regained his confidence, and got the perfect car at the perfect price. There are a lot of ways to express the joy you feel this time of year. Offering you a great deal on the 2011 Genesis is one of ours. Now, during Hyundai holidays, you can lease the 2011 Genesis for just $3.99 a month. From everyone at Hyundai, have a safe and happy holiday. Water gives life and hope. The first California aqueduct was built in 1819 by the first inhabitants, including ancestors of the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. This irrigation system, called the Zanja, provided water to raise crops like citrus and grow the local economy. Even today, the San Manuel Band continues to contribute to important community projects throughout the Inland Empire, giving life and hope to millions of Californians. Join us in celebrating the contributions of Native Americans. These are stitched from 800 thread count Egyptian linen, of course, with Austrian crystal. Oh, these are not for the kids. These are for the holidays. Hold on, we don't want them to swivel. It causes wear and tear on the loop. In a season marked by overindulging and overspending, Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TSX for well-qualified customers. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Jerry, the Gallery of Jewelry, with five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores. 20 seniors playing their final game here at the Carrier Dome. Head coach Doug Marone out there taking photos with them pre-game, and that's a, a nice send-off. He didn't recruit these kids, but they're playing hard for him. Yeah, they are definitely doing that. Uh, these seniors have really bought into the new concept here, and uh, I think they're going to leave this program in pretty good shape. Speaking of leaving, a lot of the fans heading for the cold <laughs> weather outside, leaving the safe confines of the Carrier Dome after that fourth and two, and Syracuse decided to punt it away. Yeah. Fourth and ten, maybe. But fourth and two, you, you have to. Sometimes as a, as a coach, and obviously I've never been a coach, but you have to make a call for the fans. <laughs> and that was a call for the fans there. And uh, I don't think he made the right one. First and ten, BC has the ball. They go right back to Andre Williams. The freshman from Snexville, Pennsylvania, Eastern PA, no gain on the play. And the timeouts are now coming. Syracuse burns one here. While we have time, let's take a look at our Bud Light playbook. Not a lot to dial up here, but yeah. BC has been grinding on them. Well, you see this right here. Darrell Smith. It looks to be a little bit confused. He sends the linebacker here, and I don't know if he was supposed to blitz on that. Obviously not, because he left Pantelli wide open right there for a very easy catch and, catch and pass, pass and catch. And um, man, what a great play for the for the BC Eagles, but that really put the Syracuse defense in a very tough spot. Frank Spaziani trying to get his Boston College Eagles to 7-5. And, and what does that do? Well, it sends you to a little nicer bowl game. It helps for recruiting. Yes. You lead the season, and if they get a win in the bowl game, then that's 10 eight. seasons in a row, eight victories for Boston College. So the folks at the Heights would be very happy about that. And it's always nice, as you know, Tim, ending the season with a win. Yes, yes. And you could talk about all the freshmen and all right. the future of the program. And uh... But he's doing it with freshmen. Yes. Second and 11. They'll stay with a freshman. Freshman to freshman. Chase Reddick hands off to Andre Williams. Shamarco Thomas comes up and makes the stop after one yard gain, but the clock continues to roll and Syracuse decides to call another timeout. Well, tomorrow night on BCS Countdown, join us for an exclusive unveiling of the new BCS rankings. Find out who's in the driver's seat and who's poised to be this year's BCS Buster. 
BCS Countdown presented by Vizio on ESPN. That's tomorrow, 8.15 Eastern. Reese Davis will do the honors, and uh, we've talked about it with Boise State. Warren Four, how far do they fall? Um, definitely out of the top ten, I believe. I think you have to get them out of that out of that picture. So uh, it's just so unfortunate to see those guys go down the way they went down. But uh, and, and I've said this sort of jokingly, but I really believe losing to Nevada, if they would have lost in the BCS bowl game, that would have been different. But losing to Nevada, now people are going to always say, see, I told you, I told you, I told you. And that's going to make it almost impossible for these guys to ever get there. Nevada's a good team. They are, absolutely. They are. And we've talked about Colin Kaepernick as Boston College State with the running game, and that is a very violent tackle, and that is going to draw a flag. We got the horse collar going there. Flag on the play. Personal foul. Horse collar tackle against the defense. 15 yards to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Anthony Perkins called for the horse collar. It's all about safety and protecting the players. Yeah, I, I don't know why the fans are booing about that one. That was probably, probably about as simple a call as you can make. You cannot grab a man by the back of his jersey, and he grabbed him with two hands, not just one. And that really says it all. Fourth player in the a season, 40-plus rushing attempts in a game, and he's a freshman. And you know what? He... He has been strong the whole game. It's yep. not like he's gotten weak as yep. as this thing has moved on. So um, Keith Jackson used to say, "It's not heavy, and they're not in union, so keep giving it to them." <laughs> he the best or what? Oh, he was absolutely, and still plays a mean game of golf out there in California. <laughs> So on first down, they give it back to the freshman, and he just runs it right up the middle, crosses midfield, so tack on three more yards to the freshman. Doug Hogue makes the stop. Well, we talked a lot about the BCS today with Boise State falling last night at home. I think you look at the body of the work before you criticize someone's strength of schedule. And there was a president from a college in the Midwest who made a comment this week that really drew, drew the ire of, of fans all across the country unless you were in Ohio State. I think the folks even in Ohio State would say don't do that. Don't do that. We, <laughs> right. we don't need to say right. those things because Nevada they, they beat some good teams this year. They beat Boise State, BYU, California. Yeah, Back no, no, one is, no one is playing the schedule where you know the Everybody's in the top 10. Well, you know, but if your strength of schedule is in the 50s or 60s, right. you don't say we're playing Murder's Row every week. <laughs> if your strength of schedule is in the top 10 or 15, right. I, you know, go ahead and fire that off. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah, last time I checked, Ohio and Marshall were not on Murder's, Murder's Row when it comes to college football. Good football teams in their own right, but uh, there's some tougher teams out there to play. Andre Williams 41 carries that is the most by a freshman just passing Lattimore of South Carolina and they'll add to it I'll tell you what Montel Harris watching at home I'm sure he's happy to see his team getting this win but he's thinking man I got to get some rehab here oh, all yeah, right well, coach have to go for it here on fourth down but uh, yeah if I'm Montel Harris I'm going hey uh, coach my knee is feeling real good <laughs> You know, you get me to late December, I may be able to get back for you. Yeah, he had a little bit of meniscus cleaned up in that knee. Nothing too serious, but anytime time you operate on a football player's knee, it's, yes, it's serious. Take time, that's for sure. And if it was a bigger bowl game, you know, maybe they would rush him back for it. But uh... now they're going to let the clock wind down. Frank Spaziani right next to the official. Decision time, fourth and one. What are you doing, Coach Brown? Uh, you know, fourth and a half a yard, you know, I, I think I have to go for it, you know. <laughs> So Boston College will talk about it. Syracuse will find a way to defend it. And we'll be back 16-7, Eagles on top. Good for 23 yards. Hey, you went to Jared. That's a peerless diamond. The ideal, ideal cut diamond. What? If you want to create your own one-of-a-kind ring, get to Jared this Friday through Monday because you can receive Get Set and Diamonds rewards up to $1,000 toward a beautiful diamond setting when you buy your diamond at Jared. Choose from thousands of diamonds and hundreds of settings. Get up to a $1,000 reward this Friday through Monday at Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. <laughs> What's wrong? Uh, there are so many new 
gifts. How do I make sure everyone gets exactly what they want? Hey, it just takes some training. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Rise and shine. And go. Whoa. Uh, a little more. Good. Now e-readers. Boom, bam, boom. This tablet's online. I'm streaming. Perfect. 100%. You've earned it. I said I wouldn't cry. Unbeatable prices on the most e-readers under one roof. And the people who know them inside and out. It doesn't take more than one person to talk to a woman. Stay thirsty, my friends. American innovation meets Mexican styling. Taco Bell's totally redesigned chicken enchilada. Tender marinated all-white meat chicken, slow-simmered enchilada sauce, and melty cheese wrapped up and grilled to go. Only at Taco Bell. Driving a brand new Hyundai Sonata put you in the holiday spirit. Or do the holidays make it more fun to drive the Sonata? Now, during Hyundai holidays, you can lease the 2011 Sonata for just $199 a month. From everyone at Hyundai, have a safe and happy holiday. Tonight on ABC, two classic rivalries. The Oklahoma Sooners take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys with a spot in the Big 12 championship game at stake. Some of you will see Notre Dame USC. That's tonight at 8 Eastern. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC. Mike Holmes on the special teams return, and it wasn't much of a return. 61-yard punt. He takes it out to about the six-yard line. So with 2.17 to go, Syracuse has got to go up to hurry-up mode, and for a team that's yes. not known for quick strikes. You know, the problem, I think, as an outside observer, is the Syracuse fans want to see success, and they have had a winning season this year, but you've got to win at home, and so far, Syracuse has not beaten a BCS team at home. They beat Colgate, and they beat Maine at home. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not going to leave these fans with a very good taste in their mouth. And the flags sure. come out. But with losses to Pittsburgh, Louisville, UConn, and now BC. Well, those are the games everybody will want to come and see you, see you win. Well, that's tough. That's, that's very, very tough. And, you know, you have to take a little solace in the fact that you have a winning season. But, man, you always have to take care of home. So Syracuse looking to drop to seven and five. Nassib comes out firing, has his man Nick Provo in the flats. And Provo will be tackled down just short of the 10-yard line by who else? Luke Keekley. So you got to get out of bounds there. There's no reason to try and turn it up and get two extra yards. Just get out of bounds and give, you know, save yourself a little time. Syracuse without timeouts. We go under two minutes to play here, deep in their own territory at the 10-yard line. Nassib back to pass again. Does a great job of getting it out. Antoine Bailey with a six-yard pickup. Clock will stop momentarily as Newman and Keekley teamed up to stop him. And once that ball is reset and the chains are moved, they'll wind it up again. Nassib across the middle was looking for sales. He was into double coverage and able to bring it in. So for Syracuse, the season comes to a conclusion. As we pointed out, they are be six and seven and five, excuse me, for the season. Coach said they wanted to get to a bowl game. They wanted to have a winning season. That goal was met. Now they need to take the next step. They have to, the goals have to go a lot higher now. And, uh, and certainly you can't have this happening at the end of the season where your fans are walking out. That is not a, a good thing for the players who see the players see this. But they feel it. They feel it happening, and that's that's not a good thing. And it's picked off. Number 94, Mark Herslick, comes up with the interception. So the miracle player continues. Herslick with a beautiful interception, and that sends the fans to the Carrier Dome turnstiles. Oh, when you put a team in a situation that they're not comfortable in, Syracuse is not a quick strike offense, right. and they're not a come from behind team. And hers looked right at the whole way. Yeah, no doubt. He was he was sitting there waiting on that, playing deep, a little deeper than he normally plays. And uh, quarterback got a little stressed and had to make a play. And Herslick said, "Thank you very much." 
And this is the best formation for any offense, <laughs> the victory formation. <laughs> All right, your thoughts as we go down to 115 to play in this game. Your thoughts, first of all, going ahead with Boston College as they look towards their bowl game. Well, you know, I think they found something. They have found something in, in Andre Williams. And I don't know if they knew they had because they, they were running Montel Harris so much that he was only coming in spot plan. He played very well last week when he when he, uh, when he came in for Harris. But now they know they can really build around this guy. Right. And with Chase Reddick coming along, um, I think they really have something special. And what a solid linebacking core with Herzlick, Keekly, well, and Kevin Pierre-Louis. They are very talented. Well, you know, I, I think this Keekly kid, his ability to diagnose play, plays and his pad level, once he gets to the back, it's always... <laughs> He's always in a perfect yeah. position to to make the hit and bring guys down. You very seldom see him miss tackles. So that will do it. No need to snap the snap the ball again. Boston College will come to Syracuse and pick up a win to end the season. For Coach Doug Marone, they'll have time now to prepare for their bowl game. Boston College 16-7 as the coaches meet at midfield. And tonight, remember, on the ESPN family of networks, USC, Notre Dame, Bedlam, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Remember Clemson, South Carolina getting together. I know you're looking for Notre oh, Dame, USC. Indeed. But Make it happen. what's your second choice? <laughs> well, obviously, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, this Notre Dame game is all the only thing that's going to be on my mind this afternoon. Andre Williams, a true freshman with a tremendous game tonight. An impressive performance by that young man and Mark Herzlick coming up with the interception to wrap up the game. Once again, our final four, Boston College 16, Syracuse 7. For Tim Brown, I'm Todd Harris saying so long from Syracuse, New York. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May in the studio. Todd, thank you. Two of the three teams atop the Big Ten well on their way to victory. Can Wisconsin follow suit? On Wisconsin to Pasadena? We could know by the end of the day. Badgers taking on Northwestern coming up on ABC or ESPN kickoff in just over 49 minutes. Elsewhere at the dope, Christian Pronder trying to stop a six-game losing streak against Florida State's arch-rival Gators. Seminoles and Gators, that is coming up next. scoreboard is presented by Acura. Want to take you around the country via the map so you can find the game that you want to see the most on ABC or ESPN. If you're looking for Northwestern and Wisconsin and live in the area of the country that is shaded gold, Northwestern and Wisconsin will be on ABC standard definition only on ESPN and the other parts of the country. If you want to see the Gators and the Seminoles, get together 3:30 eastern if you live in the gold area you get that on your abc affiliate otherwise you can see it in high definition on espn in the big east uconn is now the team after a crazy friday that controls its own destiny uconn taking on cincinnati if they win out they'll go to a bcs game zach frazier in the flat to his fullback anthony sherman terrific timing off the play action fake for sherman taking it into the goal line with the extra effort touchdown huskies UConn up four, now 17 to 10. Zach Kolaris has it picked off. Go, big fella. Kendall Reyes is going. Go, big fella. Now, Lawrence Wilson, the senior, number eight, is going to be called for an illegal block in the back right there oh. on Isaiah Pede. Edsel, Edsel didn't care much for that. UConn would take over on the 15, but it doesn't matter, Lou, because he's got Jordan Todman. Uh, Edsel, I strongly beg to disagree with your opinion, sir. <laughs> Jordan Todd. Well, watch him bounce this to the outside. It's jammed up inside, bounces it out, and first to go. UConn now back up by two touchdowns, and then just moments ago, as Kolaris was trying to drive his team, floater that is picked off by Mike Lang. And UConn at home up 24 to 10. 
trying to hold that lead for 11 minutes and 9 seconds. Their last game comes in South Florida. Win that, it's off to the BCS. But they've got to finish this one off first. We're going to take you out there for a little peek at Rensselaer Field coming up in just a little bit. Here are the scenarios. Mentioned a couple of times, UConn's good. The help West Virginia needs, they just need a UConn loss. Pittsburgh needs a bunch of help. They need UConn to lose. They also need West Virginia to lose as well. So that is the way the Big East stacks up. We just saw Syracuse fall to Boston College. Here's my question about the Big East. Is this a, is this a down year? Is this part of a cycle? Or is this conference just so far behind, certainly the four big conferences, that it really shouldn't be mentioned in the same category? All of the above. Okay. Because if you look at the conference, I think they're very weak in certain areas. They should recruit better. But the bottom line is, if you look at UConn, this is a team that a lot of us at the beginning of the season thought that they would win the Big East because they lost so many close games last year, because they did go to a bowl game and they won last year, and they had a lot of starters returning. They started off slow, but they're finishing strong. And the way that they're playing today, if they can close out this game against Cincinnati, I think they're going to end up winning the Big East. And Randy Etzel and his coaching staff should get all the credit that's out there because the way that they kept this team together, the changes at the quarterback position. But Jordan Todd and the running back, he's what's really kept focus on this football team because each and every week, hand him the football, get victories at the end of the season. My wife told me to pray for patience. You'll have opportunities to do it. You give me, you test my patience. <laughs> Everybody criticizes the Big East. Let me tell you something. They got three brand new coaches in there. There's only seven. Then no guy came in there last year, Maloney last year. They had, they came in because the programs are down. They need somebody to come in, go to build them up. It doesn't happen overnight. You get good coaches in there. You have good recruiting. You'll build good facilities. You'll be very competitive. Yes, you look at the schools there. Syracuse has a tradition. I think that it will be back. But give the young coaches a chance that came in. They came in because they're losing programs. Well, they've got good facilities. They've got good facilities. Back, West Virginia, Pittsburgh, they've Louisville. been there in the first place. Would well, no, no. no you're you going to tell me the pit in a pretty good football program. No, I mean, well, thank you. I appreciate Syracuse that. As a, it, it is. It has, as Syracuse tradition. certainly has some tradition, it, but pro like, some of that is pre-Big East days, though. Oh, I, I, I know that, but when you go and, and you, when you have so many new coaches, what do you expect from them? But you look at U UConn and Syracuse, they're nationally known as basketball schools, not football schools, but the way that Randy Etzel, okay. without a big budget, has put this program together each and every year, they're going hey. to bowl games. They're okay, hey, okay. Every year, you, and you they complain don't recruit, about they don't recruit the Texas, Florida, Hey, California. that Connecticut team beat uh, the SEC team quite decisively last year in a bowl game. It wasn't even close. South Carolina? So, well, we are going to make <laughs> it. Did, did you notice that, too? That yeah. And SEC it would have been Kentucky, it would have been Vanderbilt. Yeah. But, 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 South Carolina. What I'm saying is, there okay. will be. But uh, Randy Edsel has built this program up into where he's nationally competitive. Remember, it hasn't been that long that UConn has just been in 1A football, or FBS as we like to call it, maybe off to the BCS. Take you out now to East Hartford for a little peek at UConn and Cincinnati. Here's Mike Lucy. They did get the touchdown, and now Kolaris trying to get a touchdown, and he finds Benz, and he dropped the football at the 25-yard line. That'll stop the clock. Would have been another first down. This surprises me after the way they were moving it in the first half, John. This uh, graphic right here is a little bit surprising to Especially me. Especially that last drive. Four plays, 25 yards. I think they had a 14-yard run by Kalaris in there, and they get the interception. So punt, punt, miss field goal, and then they turn it over on the fourth drive. Five wide receivers. Kalaris looked left, comes back to the right side. And some miscommunication. Looks like he threw it behind D.J. Woods. Well, this is a sample of what they've done in the second half. We just showed you the second half possession chart for Polaris and company on the Bearcats offense, and they haven't been able to get it going. And it seems like this defense of, of UConn has had the answers for Zach Polaris in the second half. Another huge third down situation. They get bigger and bigger as we go deeper into the ball game. 50%, 6 of 12 on third down. So far here. Over the middle, Benz has it, and he's popped at the 25 yard line. Jerome Jr., Richard sophomore safety, put his shoulder down, but they pick up 15. They move the chain, stop the clock with 10.56 to go. And Mike, this takes a lot of courage to come over the middle like this in a situation where you're down. You know you're going to get hit. That's just a great job of concentrating on the football by Armand Benz. Big-time receiver played behind Dominic Goodman and, of course, Marty Gilliard. 
the last couple of years Gilliard last year especially he has eight for ninety five now as he flirts with another one hundred yard gain and well that was dangerously hanging up there and bleedy Ray Wilson almost had his uh, third pick six. Well I thought he was going to make a play on the football in the open field bleedy Ray Wilson looked like he was bre breaking on the football but never made a play on it. I think at the last millisecond he thought you know what I got a good chance to nail DJ Woods here. But uh, you're right I think if he made a play on the ball he might have came down with the INT. Four wideouts five wideouts. Three on top of your screen. Claris takes off again. Up over the 40 yard line another first down Whoa, he's still inside. The white lines and he moves down to the 45 yard line before he's driven out of bounds. See you more. 31 on the play and another big run out of the quarterback position. This is a, a design quarterback draw. Kolaris looks like he's going to go out of bounds and then tight ropes the sideline gets pushed out of bounds by Jerome Jr. But another big play out of the quarterback using that athleticism on the edge. Clock running 10 07 down two touchdowns. Kolaris spins inside the 35. And he's wrestled down at about the 34 uh, yard line inside a Rensselaer field the home of the Huskies they take on the two time defending Big East champions the Bearcats of Cincinnati along with John Congemi and Eamon McEnany I'm Mike Gleason Butch Jones has to win two to go bowling this year what's at stake for the Huskies just went out keep winning baby and they'll be headed for the BCS Bowl they need a victory here today. Need a victory down in Tampa next week against South Florida. More than likely the Fiesta Bowl. The Calaros says, hey, there's plenty of time. I'm not finished working here yet. Penalty five. Looks like this will go against Gratz. The redshirt sophomore from Piscataway, New Jersey. Pass interference. Defense number 24. Spot foul. Automatic first down. Well, John, if they can score, if they can score, it gets interesting here with uh, 9.39 to go. Plenty of time left for Cincinnati, a team that likes to spread you out and can move the football with quickness. On that play, Gratz just riding up the back of the big play receiver Armand Bins. He gets caught only a couple yard gain, but UConn has to find a way to keep Cincinnati out of the end zone. So another first down for the Bearcats. Kalaris standing back there in the pocket, fires, and there's another penalty flag. Again, it's Gratz as he's trying to stay step for step with Armand Bins. And Gratz saying to the officials, What do you want from me? Bins had his hands on the ball. Pass interference, defense number 24, automatic first down. So back to back infractions back to back first downs and the Bearcats now remember the last time they were down here they threw the pick and that's when Kendall Reyes came up with it. Well Dwayne Gratz has a tough assignment on the outside trying to keep the 6'3 204 pound Armand Bins away from the football. He has every right to to go ahead and, and fight back but it looked like that left hand was holding Bins down. Bins now nine for 107. So Bins over 100 yards again. For the ninth time this year. Barros, nice fake. He takes off and Seal Moore rustles him down at the 15 yard line, a four yard gain. Could have been worse, but nice job by Seal Moore. Seal Moore tackling a, an elusive quarterback in the open field. And I would look for Cincinnati here on second down to spread the football out again, get that wide receiver in the middle of the field. It might be an opportunity for single coverage. 71 yards rushing now for the quarterback for Cincinnati, Zach Polaris. And Mike at the top of the screen, Armand Bins again in single coverage with Gratz. Might be a situation where they throw a jump ball or a quick slant at the top of the screen. Polaris looks and fires, and this one's almost picked off again. Penalty flag dropped, and uh, the Huskies fans are saying, come on. Again, it's number 24. Dwayne Gratz, the redshirt sophomore from Piscataway, and again, the intended receiver was big number 80, Armand Bin. And Randy Etzel's about on the 15 yard line. He's not happy Pass about it. Defense number 24. Automatic first down. Now, Mike, I thought the first play Gratz made was pass interference. The second one was very questionable. I'm not sure. This is a throw behind. How do you know as a defensive back, you have your back turned, that the ball's thrown behind? You look for the football. That's not pass interference. No. That's a bad call. 
So Brad's getting up wondering if uh, all these officials are from Morgantown West Virginia. <laughs> Of course, the West Virginia fans wanting Cincinnati to win this game. Well, you're in a situation now with Cincinnati. You can run it or throw it with run it with the quarterback. Close quarterback draw, and he lunges for the end zone. They're going to call it a touchdown. He's in. He broke the plane. 24 penalty yards on that drive, and Zach Calaros takes it in rushing, and suddenly we have a football game. Nice call by the Cincinnati staff there and Butch Jones the head coach happy that his offense was able to go down take it down with throwing the football and riding the legs of Zach Kolaris who reaches for the end zone let's see if that knee touches down before the ball gets in the end zone I think it's down it may have been just before the goal line that's a tough tough assignment for the officials who will probably look at this upstairs yeah, Pat Garvey already has the uh, head Headset on. They went upstairs. Buddy Ward's going to take a look at it. Well, the way the calls have been going against UConn, I'm not sure if they're <laughs> going to get this one. 88 yards, eight plays. Again, 24 penalty yards on the drive. And Zach Kalaros with the lunge. It's going to be interesting to see how Buddy Ward calls this one. But uh, I think you're right, John. I think that knee touches right there. Again, all he has to do is get to the front of that white line. Doesn't have to break the white line. Well, that's the part of the equation that's tough, Mike, because you have to have indisputable mm. video evidence, and you have to have really that shot down the line, and it's tough to tell whether that ball is breaking the plane or not, so you don't have the evidence. You may have to go with the call on the field. That's a good point, because angles, the angles that they take a look at, so important. Indisputable video evidence. That's what they're looking for. And Pat Garvey awaits the call. Well, I'll tell you, Buddy Ward's had two tough calls down on the goal line. One on the INT for Cincinnati, and now this touchdown, or the apparent touchdown by Zach Kalaros. Yeah, the tough calls were made on this drive with the pass interference calls. I, I thought the first one was a good call, but the, the last two were questionable because both guys, both offense and defense, have a right to the football. And you have to allow that defensive back, especially Gratz on the last one, turns his head identifies the football After and makes a play review, on it. The play on the field stands as called. Touchdown. So they couldn't come up with the indisputable video evidence to overrule it, so it's a touchdown for the Bearcats, and we still have 8.41 to go. If uh, Rodgers nails the extra point, we're down to a one-touchdown ball game. And we're down. A seven point game, 24 17, Rodgers. A lot of time left. UConn certainly not out of the woods yet. Up 24 to 17. We'll continue to give you peaks, and we're with you until 3 35 Eastern time until the start of your game, whether it is Northwestern and Wisconsin or Florida and Florida State. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and Mark May with you. Big Ten today, we get things settled. A three way tie at the top, including Ohio State. Buckeyes going for at least a share of their sixth straight conference record that would tie their own mark set in the mid-70s. Taking on their arch rival Michigan, Terrell Pryor, Denard Robinson, couple of explosive quarterbacks. Robinson, though, this has been a problem throughout the second half of the year, Mark. Michigan not taking care of the football. You have to put two hands on that football and protect it, particularly when you get inside the red zone. The Buckeyes do a great job of stripping it and recovering it. Now in the second quarter, the Buckeyes had a 10-7 lead. Michigan had just gone on a long touchdown drive. This really turned the game around Jordan Hall, Lou. Oh, this is just a very fine executed uh, kickoff return. Uh, just outstanding, but it helps when the other team doesn't tackle real well. 17-7. That, too, has been a common theme in defense and special teams for Michigan. Terrell Pryor, Devere Posey. In the 17-7 game late in the first half, he's going to split them. Touchdown, Buckeyes, 24-7. Now, Nard Robinson had a little bit of problem with his non-throwing hand. Tate Forcier comes in. He floats one downfield that is picked off by Travis Howard. Robinson would return at quarterback. On the ensuing drive, boom, goes Dan Heron. And he's gone. Terrific job of blocking by the right side of the offensive line, and he's not going to get tackled. Chose his speed. He's in for the score. Heron also had a 98-yard run that was 
negated back down to an 89 yarder due to a holding penalty that was quite questionable. By who? By me. Just, you know, wasn't much of a hold. 37 to 7. We're splitting hairs, though. Herons had a great day. 175 yards. Ohio State going for seven straight over Michigan. And you know, Jim Trestle, he is going to be nine and one against Michigan. On the flip side, Rich Rodriguez hasn't really been close. Couple of blowouts in his three games against Ohio State, 42-7 and 08. And this one is looking about the same as that one. So the Buckeyes going to get a share of the Big Ten title. Michigan State on ESPN2 right now, hoping to follow suit. Sparty hasn't won a share of the title since 1990, but Joe Paterno had never lost to Michigan State and State College. Edwin Baker, the, the touchdown, touchdown maker. maker. Spartans still hoping and dreaming things would fall their way to get that Rose Bowl bid. Kirk Cousins, B.J. Cunningham, Luke. Well, I think I could have thrown that. That was a well-designed play. Uh, or busted coverage. <laughs> busted or coverage. some combination. Cousins to Cunningham again. Touchdown. Michigan State. Look to be running away with it. But now 28-16, first and goal. Trenton Robinson off the deflection. That pick ought to seal it, or does it? Derek Moy took it back, and Penn State is still alive. Now, they've got to score. they got to get the onside kick. But Moy at least took it back <laughs> again. You know, at that point, maybe you just take the knee in the end zone. Absolutely. Let your offense run off the clock. Michigan State got a little happy there, and now... 28-16 game. We'll let you know how that comes out. It's on ESPN2. So here are the scenarios in the Big Ten. Wisconsin, Northwestern about to play in a little bit. All three of these teams sitting at 6-1. Ohio State's going to go to 7-1. Michigan State almost certainly is going to go to 7-1. So the Rose Bowl scenarios or the automatic bid into the BCS from the Big Ten goes like this. If everybody wins, the school with the highest BCS rank will get it this moment it would be Wisconsin. If Wisconsin and Ohio State win, apparently unlikely because Michigan State's in good shape, it would be Wisconsin based on head-to-head. -head. If Wisconsin and Michigan State win, that's not happening because Ohio State's got assaulted away, but that was the case that would have given the Spartans the automatic bid to the BCS and to the Rose Bowl because they won head-to-head -head against Wisconsin. What appears likely, barring a stunning upset by Northwestern, is that we're going to have a three-way tie and that the highest team ranked in the BCS will get the bid. And it looks as if that would probably be Wisconsin. What do you think of, of the Big Ten's overall strength this year? I think that they were very much improved, particularly last year. They were much better in the bowl games. And this year, they're even better because you've got three teams right now with one loss. If they finish out that way, you're probably going to have two teams in the BCS bowl games. And I think that is a great feather in the cap for the conference. That's extra money for the conference one. And that's two that just shows that they can go not only in conference and win, but out of conference and win. Well, I look at the quarterbacks, and almost every team has an outstanding quarterback. You even go to Indiana. I mean, they can flat throw the football. But you have Terrell Pryor. You, you got uh, Stancy at Iowa. I mean, Cousins at Michigan State. All the way down the line, you got a very good quarterback. And a school like Illinois that you didn't think had one, Shieldhouse came along, had an outstanding year. So I think the Big Ten's a very solid conference and one of the better ones in the country. You know, it's been well documented, too. There's a difference of opinion between you two guys as to who is stronger, Wisconsin or Wisconsin. Ohio State at Wisconsin. this point in the season. The season. one's right and one's wrong. Wisconsin. I'm right, he's wrong, that's all. Wisconsin beat Ohio State, there's no question about it. But, but, you, but you, you continue to dismiss Michigan State's win over Wisconsin. Because of the way that they're playing at the end of the season. We're talking well, about that's how they're playing. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Let me, show you, let, me show you how, let me show you how Michigan State's playing right at the moment against Penn State after Derek Moy took the ball out of Robinson's hand to give the Nittany Lions another chance. Matt McGloin would find Moy. He's doing a little bit of everything. Touchdown. They went for two. Didn't really have to. It didn't matter. He'd need another touchdown anyway. So now 28-22, less than a minute to go. My point's proven right there. No, it's a not. mediocre Penn State team. They're struggling to win this game. Well, I, I want to tell you. They struggled right, against right, Purdue. Right now, from the first, after the first half of Wisconsin, Ohio State is playing as well as anybody in the country. Defense, since they've gone to the I formation and given the ball to Heron, week after week, they've gotten better and better. And this is a great Ohio State. They team. lost to Wisconsin now. Uh, and who lost to Michigan State? But I agree with hey, you. Hey, no, 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 I agree no. with you. But hey, what do you have, Sparty tattooed on oh, your back? Oh, now you're taking sides. No, I, I happen to agree with Mark. I think Wisconsin's playing a little bit better. But no, I just no, no. can't let you guys get away with dismissing part of the facts. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Virginia, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech trying to become... What? Uh, easy. Virginia Tech tried to become the first. We're airing the laundry here. 
Trying to become the first ACC team since Florida State in 2000 to go unbeaten in the regular season. Ryan Williams, he's been injured for much of the year. What a talented back he is. He's not the only one, Mark. They also have David Wilson. And David Wilson is spectacular. When you put the ball in his hands with the speed and the ability he has and the strength and the athleticism, right there finishes the playoff and scores a touchdown for the Hokies. This guy had mono a couple of weeks ago. It didn't cost him a step. And here's Williams again, Lou. He's going to drag Leroy Reynolds. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you, you just talk about They have so many fine running backs at Virginia Tech. But I think their offense breeds that. They must practice very physical. All right, Virginia Tech, 37 to 7. They're about to finish 8 and 0. They're going to win 10 games again, and with Texas finishing with a losing record, not coming close to winning 10 this year, Virginia Tech will assume the mantle of the longest current run of 10 win seasons with their six. So Virginia Tech. Now sitting here with 10 wins, the loss to Boise State on opening night, which begat the loss to James Madison. And you can't excuse that. You can't just wipe it away. But what a remarkable job that Frank Beamer and his entire staff did of regathering his team and have them really finishing strong. Not only the coaching staff, how about Tyrod Taylor, the quarterback, as a leader, not only off the field, but on the field to play. What he was able to do, he led his team through a long stretch and was the leading rusher on this team as well as the leading passer at the quarterback position. But his leadership as a captain on this football team and taking charge of this football team, saying, we were embarrassed early in the year, we're not going to be denied, we're going to win out in the ACC, and we're going to get 10 wins and get to a BCS Bowl game. And I think that's a tribute to his leadership and the way that he's played the entire season. You know, let me uh, clean up, too, just to make sure. Virginia Tech was at six in a row, and as soon as that game becomes final, it will be their seventh consecutive season with at least ten wins. Virginia Tech, if not for that James Madison loss, Lou, would we be talking about them as maybe the best one-loss team? Or are they in the category with all of those one-loss teams right now in terms of the way they're playing? The way they're playing, they're playing awful well, but you can't tell because they're in the ACC. But I, I will say this. I, I think Coach Foster is the most underrated assistant coach in the entire country. He's been with uh, uh, Coach for a long time, but he always has great defense. But the thing that impresses you about Virginia Tech, week in and week out, they get better. By the end of the year, they're much better than they were at the beginning of the year. And that is a mark of a well-coached team. And for Bud Foster not to have a head coaching opportunity really befuddles me because year in and year out, he's got a great defense at Virginia Tech. And even this year, he had to replace eight starters on that defense, and they're still one of the top defenses in the conference. And every year he gets it done, whether it be five seniors, eight seniors, two seniors on that defense, he finds a way to get it done schematically and putting players in the right place at the right time. But sometimes an assistant coach doesn't want to be a head coach. They just love being a coordinator. Spoken, well, spoken from a head coach. Oh, I want my assistants to stay with me. They're loyal <laughs> guys. No, I no, love my hey, guys. Hey, 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 I've been a head coach. And I've had a uh, Joe Moore was a great assistant coach. I couldn't even get him to become an offense coordinator. All he wanted to do was coach those little guys that I like it. He said, linemen aren't real smart. He said, I'm always smarter than him. <laughs> you played for Joe Moore. You That's know what correct. I, mean. I did. <laughs> you know, linemen sometimes open holes for guys to run through, and they put up huge numbers, and often they do it very quietly, like... UConn's Jordan Todman. We've been keeping up with the UConn-Cincinnati game because the Huskies, if they went out, they'll go to the BCS. Mark, this Todman kid is second in the nation in rushing. A tough run against Cincinnati up by a touchdown. And very quietly because he's so physical and so smart and he's so intelligent, he knows where the hole is. He studies short yardage and goal line, and when he gets close to the goal line, you're not going to stop him. 168 yards for Todman, about 20 over his average. And how could they leave him off the Doak Walker list? I, I agree with you. He's had a tremendous yep. season. Connecticut with a 31-17 lead. Still have to hold it for six and change at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford. Trip to South Florida next week. What a giant stepping stone for the program it would be if UConn could get to a BCS game. 119th meeting between the longtime rivals, the Jayhawks and the Tigers. KU and Missouri playing in Kansas City. Hey, Mo, spread out. Look at the blocks by Curly, Larry. We're only kidding, Mizzou. Only kidding. Missouri up 14 0. Missouri's able to take a joke because Kendall Lawrence gone. 31 yards. Not much that Mizzou fans enjoy more than putting a good whipping on Kansas in just about anything. And they're doing that with 10 and change to go. It's 28 to 7 as Missouri will not go to the Big 12 championship game, losing the tiebreaker to Nebraska, but will still finish with 10 wins, 6-2 and two record in the Big 12. A great, great season for Gary Pinkle and Blaine Gabbert. Throwing a couple of picks, but he has run for a touchdown. Big time BCS ball out on Friday. The shot heard round the world for Boise State and the huge comeback by Auburn and a smaller one by Oregon.
And don't forget, you'll be able to see John Clay, see how healthy he is. Been struggling a bit with the knee, Northwestern and Wisconsin, as the Badgers try to get a share of that Big Ten title. College Football Scoreboard is presented by Acura. The most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. This is a 19-foot subalpine fur. This year, we have our own personal Santa. We've done the whole cardboard reindeer thing, so, you know. It's a 60s postmodern gingerbread house. It's worth it. In a season marked by overindulging and overspending, I'll wait here for him. Acura introduces the concept of oversaving. Test drive a new Acura during the Season of Reason sales event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2011 Acura MDX for well-qualified customers. While the world's been waiting on the electric car, maybe the whole time, the electric car has been waiting for this. The Watt Station from GE. It's going to change the way we get to where we all want to go. Nearly 50 years. Hundreds of thousands of vehicles. But only one set of standards. The Rusnak standard. Because at the end of the day, my name goes on all of it. For service values, daily specials, and pre-owned vehicles certified by Rusnak Master Technicians, visit us at rusnakonline.com. It's Toyota's Thanksgiving clearance. Get huge year-end savings on all remaining 2010 Toyotas. Yes, get 0% financing on 10 Toyota models. Zero APR on cars, trucks, SUVs. And now with Toyota Care, get a complimentary maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Making it easy, easy on you. Hurry, Toyota's Thanksgiving clearance ends soon. College Football Scoreboard is presented by Acura. The most innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find in an Acura. We've got Florida and Florida State coming up for some of you. Jimbo Fisher, his first year as the head coach in this game, going for his ninth win. Seminoles and Gators coming up just under 19 minutes. Seminoles still holding out hope of going to the ACC championship game. Needs some help from Maryland against North Carolina State. Barn burner between Miami and USF. Third quarter, Miami down by 10. Lamar Miller. Team on the move, Ja'Cory Harris, by the way, replaced Stephen Morris at quarterback, really gave the Canes a spark. Oh, they became a different team once Ja'Cory Harris came in. On offense, on defense, it just seemed to give them a spark. Now down 10-7, a storm's brewing. Storm Johnson. Fabulous block up the middle by the fullback, and he releases Storm Johnson. Oh. Here's another block right there at the end of play, but what a great cut here. It's going to take it all the way in for the score. Nice move at the end. 71 yards for Johnson, one of the bevy of young running backs for Miami. They take the lead, but in a 17-10 game, B.J. Daniels knocked out with a thigh injury, and it was Bobby Eveld, the freshman for Skip Holtz's team, tying it up at 17. Then Miami is in field goal range, and this, is, this has been Ja'Cory Harris's problem. Holta picked off Jarrell Young with the interception for USF. We're going to overtime, tied at 17. For a quarter of a century, Tennessee has beaten Kentucky. If not this year, when for the Wildcats? Derek Locke, Wildcats strike first, going up 7 0. But the thing that turned this game around, Kentucky was on the one. They fumbled. Tennessee recovered in the end zone. And from there, the balls really started to change. Tyler Bray to Gerald Jones. Oh, uh, it's just a nice throw here. Tennessee has become a different football team since they started the freshman quarterback. And again, it would be Bray, this time to Denarius Moore. Terrific job of blocking up front. Does a great job of reading the defense yeah. and the blitz. And what a nice touch on this throw. Well, I'm telling you, that, that kid does have a sweet a touch on the football. He's a big, tall, strong kid. Mike Hartline sends out his Tyler Robinson for a quick two-yard score. Cats back in it, tied at 14. But defense has been the Wildcats bugaboo this year. They haven't been able to stop Tennessee of late. Torin Poole goes in. 
Derek Dooley trying to get a precious sixth win, become bowl eligible 24-14 to score five and change to go. Ohio State wins a share of the Big Ten. That is the sixth straight time they beat Michigan 37-7. Seventh straight time they beat the Wolverines. Senator Trestle now 9-1. and one. Uh, that'll, that'll earn you some love in Columbus awesome. to have that kind of record against Michigan. Meanwhile, Rich Rodriguez blown out for the second time in three meetings against Ohio State. Michigan State gets a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 1990 as they hold off Penn State 28 to 22. Just barely average football team in the Big Ten. I know they have one loss. Wait. It's a terrific season by Mark D'Antonio. I commend it. And you know what? It's I congratulate the Spartans. Great season, but not an impressive victory. Hey, Show me one impressive first victory. First time they've not. ever won in State College. Yeah, well, since Joe Paterno's been the head coach. Yeah. They, they won there it's in 1965. 1965. And now they've won there again. And this is the winningest team in Michigan State history, a school record for wins. And it is very possible that they will be left out of the BCS. That's that's the worst part of it. Well, I mean, have a season like this at 11 and one, the best season ever. I mean, Mark D'Antonio should be he should be at the top of the list for Coach of the Year. But but the question becomes, who are you going to leave out then? Because of one because of the rules, you can only have two from a conference. Have Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan State. All if Wisconsin wins today, finishing with one loss. Well, leave Somebody Ohio State out. They lost to Wisconsin, and they've been to BCS bowl games almost every year. Leave them out. That's easy for you. That's easy for you to say. That traveling <laughs> Buckeye nation. That, I don't think that'll happen. It's not likely. All right. The BCS certainly uh, took some hits. Had some uh, some hopes thrived and saved in the waning moments on a freaky Friday. Oregon had problems with Arizona for a while, but then Josh Huff, one of the myriad speedy ducks, is loose. And they've got so many players to speed out on this team. They can throw freshmen in there. They can throw guys that haven't even played in there. They'll find ways to score, but not only that, when you've got guys that can run the ball in the backfield and make plays, quarterback position, running back position, it doesn't matter. Must be the shoes. They have speed everywhere. Even in the offensive line, they can run. 48-29 to 29 the final. Auburn was down 24 nothing. They were fortunate it wasn't more, but that just set the stage for the biggest comeback in Auburn history and the biggest collapse in Alabama history. 28-27, the final Cam Newton to Lutz and Kirk. Well, this is just an excellent job of buying time for the receiver to run across right. Auburn, one win away from the national championship game. They have to beat South Carolina in the SEC championship game, or you would suppose they have to beat them. Pretty good resume even with one loss. Boise State was sitting there hoping somebody would get beat. They just never thought it might be them. 31 all with Nevada. Kellen Moore found Titus Young. How Nevada let that happen is a miracle. Pete think, thinks he's got it. Why not? Kyle Brotsman has been Mr. Dependability for them. A mere 26 yarder mm, pushed it. Brotsman got another opportunity in overtime. This one also inside the 30. 29 yards. He's going to make this with me, coach. Oh, you got to, but he overcompensates. But, you know, he's had some problems from the hashes, but really in the middle, he's been solid. That was, he just hooked that when he missed it. So Anthony Martinez, a red shirt freshman, gets a chance to be a hero for the Hall of Famer Chris Alt. And he is 34 to 31. Nevada wins it. Nevada, Chris Alt called it the biggest win in school history. Easy to see why. Their only loss to Hawaii. So Boise State now, uh, they go from thinking that maybe the worst case scenario would be the Rose Bowl, and that's not a worst case. That's just not in the championship game. That's unbelievable for their program to left out completely in the BCS almost certainly now. Possibly the humanitarian bowl. That's how far they could possibly fall in this situation. But I look at the bigger picture, the way that Nevada was able to play, particularly in the second half with their running game. Colin Kaepernick at quarterback has been spectacular. Not only running with the football, but throwing the football this season. But in this game, in the second half, Vital, Colin Kaepernick, the quarterback, got things done on the ground. The offensive line did a fabulous job of knocking Boise back. And here's the key. Boise State was the number one rush defense in the nation, the number two total defense. And they put up 528 yards on them, 260 nine yards on the ground and a lot of it had to do with their quarterback and leader Colin Kaepernick. Okay Lou I want to ask you this question because it's what the critics will say those who are saying that Boise State didn't deserve a shot to begin with. Did this expose Boise State as not being worthy of the championship game that they they indeed did not uh, measure up with the teams from the big conferences? No because I tell you if you looked at Boise State in the first half they were as good as anybody. I'm sitting here in the first half saying I think I'm going to vote them number one. You have a different team every week, but you had a different team every half. But I also wonder how much that affected Boise State. You're there. Auburn's down 24 nothing. Is that out? Yeah, we're going to go to the championship. And then all of a sudden, the ups and the downs. And then you get to the point where you think, hey, we got this game won. And then the great throw. 
the ups and downs. I stayed up to 2.30 in the morning watching that, and just the momentum shift was just draining on you. For me, it's opposite. I, I said all year long that they don't belong with the big boys because they don't play a tough schedule like Auburn does every week or like Oregon does every week. And I said it throughout the entire season. And a lot of people jumped down my back saying, well, wait a minute, look how impressive they're winning. Look who they're winning. Yeah, against lesser competition. Yes, you can take the Virginia Tech victory and the Oregon State victory. Oregon State's not the team that they were last year. Virginia Tech rebounded. But right. if you look at their competition throughout the entire WAC conference, it doesn't measure up. And last night, it just showed America that if they did play in the Big Ten, if they did play in the SEC, they would have four or five losses minimum. They just showed me you don't evaluate a football team I say that I'll do respect. I evaluate the scoreboard they lost to Nevada I, I think they are still a great football team I think they made some mistakes they got beat but I tell you right now I watch them on offense you watch Martin I, I Kellen Moore is a great quarterback ain't nobody in the country any better than him I'm not saying they're not a great football Their team I'm just saying they're not good. upper level competition and they don't play that competition. I, I, and they I, don't I can't with agree with you more again, but those, what those I'm saying they're arguments. a great football team I'm now I agree with you they don't play this a week in and week out, but I'll tell you what, when they did play somebody, they played very well and they showed up, and it was disappointing for them to win. But let's remember, that's the same Nevada team that put 50 points on California. Yeah. The University of California that's struggling the to Pac make a bowl yeah. game. But also, win to make also a bowl the game. one that gave up one offensive touchdown to Oregon, who's number one. I'm just saying. BCS Countdown, Sunday night, 815 East. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, score all of that out. I deserve the round of applause. Yes, in high definition. BCS Countdown Show will settle all of this. Now, I want to give you a little bit of a peek right now at Miami and USF. 20 to 17. Miami has the lead in overtime. That is USF in white. They're right down on the goal line. What a monumental win this could be for South Florida against Miami if they could pull this off, Mark. It definitely would, and it would be huge in a feather in a cap. Not only that, for how about for recruiting in the state? How about making a statement for the conference of the Big East? And not only that, in the state of Florida where some of the best recruits in the nation are. And it looks like right now we're just picking this up along with you, but Bobby Eveld's in at quarterback. It looks right now that they're looking to see whether that ball was caught or whether it hit the ground. I think this was a catch. Is this is this where I need to point out that your son's head? Yes, I think so. But I agree with him. I, I know. No, I, I agree. I'm teasing because but, I, I agree with you. I but not only that, how about doing it with a freshman quarterback and a first-year coach at South Florida to beat the mighty Hurricanes if they can pull this off? A walk-on freshman quarterback. Now, they don't have any uh, quarterback depth. Evel's in the game because B.J. Daniels suffered a thigh injury earlier in the contest. Uh, I'll tell you the other thing is we let's let's listen to see what the call is meeting you're talking about bragging rights yeah talking about a chance for USF to kind of move up into the the big three world yeah and you're talking huge. okay it was called complete play stands as called so USF is right on the doorstep right now with an opportunity against Miami looking at a second and goal. This would be an opportunity for them to knock it in. And I think it's got to be patience right here. You line up with your big fellows up front and just knock the ball in. Coach, I think the play call I, should be pretty simple here. It's mano a mano. Well, I, I don't know. It depends on how strong your offensive line is. And they've had trouble getting much movement up front. But Miami, you know, the game's on the line there. Got a freshman quarterback in there. That was Joel Miller who made that catch right on the goal line. Now a second and goal for Evel. The give, Demetrius Murray. Murray into the end zone, we think. Let's see if they mark. Touchdown. South Florida wins the game. Go ahead and knock the Big East. <laughs> Big East gets a win over the ACC. <laughs> and you see some celebration out there and skipped out to celebrate and also to get his players off the field. It sounds as if right now the officials are going to look at this again to make sure that he got into the end zone. And as big a win as you take a look at Demetrius Murray, the 200-pound sophomore went over the top. He didn't get a lot of push. A little plunge at the end. Really tough to see the ball. Second effort got it. I think it was a great call to line them up and just knock the ball in the end zone with your running attack count on your offensive line. You have a freshman quarterback in there. Put it behind the big guys up front. Let them do the job. And it was the second effort that got them in there. Great call by Skip Holtz. Well, as big as it is for Skip Holtz, it will be equally um, damaging, I would think, to Randy Shannon. As Shannon's team, they have had some injuries, brought Ja'Cory Harris back this year, but they lose, or this game, they lost their last two turnover 
uh, turnover marred performance last week against Virginia Tech when they lost by two touchdowns. And to finish this, seven and five with all the hopes they had coming in, losing to South Florida at the end, could be very damaging, I, I would think. It's going to be tough for Randy Shannon, but this is not going to be overturned because it's going to be inconclusive, and they're going to say point blank they call it a touchdown on the field. How can you tell right now with all those bodies in there where the ball is? Well, Shannon. Shannon is arguing with the officials. We're, we're about 30 seconds from taking you out to your game. You're not going to miss any of your game as we wait and watch to make sure. Okay, the play we are told ahead of time, the play will stand. Touchdown USF. Murray I'm gets the game the winner. The and USF will now, after spoiling the end of Miami season, will get a chance to try to spoil UConn's hopes next week of going to the BCS. Great finish there in South Florida, actually, in actual South Florida, Miami's home stadium against the Bulls. We're back at halftime, about to take you out to your game, either Northwestern and Wisconsin or Florida and Florida State. We'll be back at the half, get you up to date on everything. See you in a bit. It's the rivalry weekend in college football, and Urban Meyer has never lost the rivalry game with Florida State. But with quarterback John Brantley and the Gators struggling, maybe this is finally the year, the first and six, where Jimbo Fisher, as the head coach of Florida State for the first time, can help the Knowles break the hex. On senior day at Bill Campbell Stadium, Christian Ponder and the FSU seniors with one last chance to beat Florida. It's Florida and Florida State. It begins now. football Doug Campbell Stadium here in Tallahassee the annual clash between Florida State and Florida it's a series that has been dominated by the Gators but Florida has been particularly dominant since Urban Meyer arrived in Gainesville they've won six in a row five times under Urban Meyer by an average of over 20 points per game Hi again, everyone. I'm Bob Wischusen alongside Brian Greasy. Thanks for joining us today. What better spot could you be oh. in than Florida, Florida State, Thanksgiving weekend here in Tallahassee, a perfect day for football and a game of monumental importance, particularly to Florida State. Certainly is. And could this be the year that Florida State breaks that six-game losing streak? The anticipation in Tallahassee with their new football coach, Jimbo Fisher, the way that he's led this team and their opportunity, really, to take over the state of Florida from a recruiting standpoint point and win the state championship today I guarantee you that there's nobody in this stadium or on that sideline from Florida State that's thinking about Maryland at NC State game today and Florida State has a chance for the first time since 1999 to win the state championship having already beaten Miami earlier this year certainly do and it's big in recruiting in this state such a fertile recruiting ground for Florida State to turn the tide on Florida in a game like this where they have a hundred recruits in town it's huge make no mistake about it if you were a recruit and you were on the sideline and you got a chance to experience a scene like the one we're experiencing here how could you not say yes <laughs> to that scholarship offer before the Knowles take the field to welcome the Gators. And now 
Now Osceola, then Renegade set to bring out the Knolls. Fisher wants the seniors up front. Here come the Knolls. All that's left is to play football in Tallahassee in a moment. Welcome to College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. It's, it's, it's. 